Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed, live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft, here with Skip Bayless, live in Atlanta for the Super Bowl. Shannon mm. Sharp, good morning, guys. Looking sharp. He's trying. Yeah. yeah. Are you ready to lose some dew this morning? Yep, I'm ready. You know, Okay. you look pretty fresh for having been up all night. I huh? was up a little. I was up a little later than I anticipated. Yeah, that's what happens to Hall of Famers at the Super Bowl, <laughs> right? Hall of Fame partiers at the Super Bowl, too. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he just went, you know, no activity for this mm. guy. Either way, I have a feeling Tonight. you're prepared, Skip. Because? For the show. I just have a feeling oh, it's a good day for you. I, I, I got the right guy on my side. Okay. So here we go. Hey, Skip. Yeah. Hey, Skip, you see old Goat James last night? Oh. Let's oh, talk about that. He did. Yeah. He did, Shannon. And yeah. yes, LeBron is back. These guys will react coming up. But Skip has had a little Twitter beef with Jet Safety, yep. Jamal Adams. So Jamal, he's going to be here later in the show. Please so bring that, that is going to be interesting. I'm ready. Either way, Shannon, I know you want to talk about LeBron. We'll get to it, but we're going to start with the Super Bowl. The Patriots are a slight two-and-a-half-point favorite Sunday against the Rams. History is definitely on New England's side. They're playing in their third straight Super Bowl, and Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are going to their ninth together. On the other side, the Rams are in their first Super Bowl since 2001. Mm. Shannon, Mm. today is the day to make your final pick. Who wins on Sunday? Well, I think it's going to be a very high-scoring game. Um, I have the utmost of confidence in Wade Phillips that he will take away the running game of the New England Patriots because if you let them run the football and you let Tom Brady have time, you have no chance of beating them. So I believe Wade Phillips stops the run first. Secondly, the most important thing is that you must take Tom Brady's first option. you got to take that away from him. Make him clutch the ball, come down, go to two to three, and that's when Sue, Donald, uh, those uh, defensive linemen has a chance to get to Tom Brady. I'm going to say it's going to be 33-30. The Rams on the third line last second field goal from about 40-plus yards away, Skip. Um, what we've seen from Coach Belichick uh, against Kansas City, that he's unpredictable. He'll take the safety out of the middle of the field. He will bring guys that when he normally isn't do, uh, wouldn't do that. So I'm going to take the Rams in a very close ball game, Skip. Um, Make them one-dimensional. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, Skip. Tom Brady's probably going to have another almost 500-yard passing day. But if you let them run it and you let Tom Brady throw it, you have zero chance of beating them. And I believe Wade takes the run game away, and they play well enough defensively, and they win 33-30. So, wait, you're trying to cover your bet by saying Tom Brady's going to throw for another almost record day, Mm -hmm. and yet somehow – Zerline's going to go Adam Vinatieri on the Patriots? Is that yes. where we're heading? You, you, that's, the, that's the only chance they have a winning, Skip, because they can't afford to let them run the football and Brady throw it because they're living third and short. That's why uh, New England, uh, remember against Kansas City, they were 13 to 19 on third down, and a lot of that was third and one to three. When it's third and 10, you're almost 90% chance you're going to get a pass. Hmm. When it's third and one to three, you have no idea. So, I must admit, for once, everything you just said, for me, is scary right. I am with you up to this point. I believe Tom Brady is up against it Sunday in your former hometown of Atlanta. (laughs) And I believe that on paper, the Rams are clearly the better overall football team than the Patriots. And that's why the most respected odds maker in the game, the guy who's, who heads up Bet Chris mm-hmm. on the Sunday night of the championship games, leaned toward his power ranking, which said the Rams were three and a half points better on a neutral field than the Patriots. And that's given that they, you know, the experience is obviously still on the Patriots side with Brady and Belichick. But he was fearful of opening at three and a half. He tried one and a half, and all of a sudden it got bet wildly the other way, all the way to Patriots by two and a half, just because I believe of the fear of that guy, number 12, who resides in Foxborough. But to me, I'm going to say this one last time ahead of this game. This is the worst supporting cast Tom Brady has ever taken to a Super Bowl. 
Tom Brady does obviously not have a Brandon Cooks. He had him last year, and then Belichick traded him away. And obviously, he didn't have him for much of the game last year when he threw for 505 because Brandon Cooks in the first quarter left with a concussion. But this year, Tom Brady has no Robert Woods. He is the Rams' leading receiver and I think the most dangerous threat on the field. And I'm not sure how the Patriots are going to be able to cover Robert Woods. And I don't think – go ahead. Skip, can I ask you a question? Yeah. When you say this is uh, Brady's least talented or supporting cast, are you just comparing it to the Rams or are you comparing it to some of his other offensive teams that he's taken to the Super Bowl? All the because way. I can make the case that this, is, this offense is better than the first one that he took. Yeah, but this defense has nothing in common with that first Oh, yeah, defense. no question. So I'm talking about with the Seymour whole – Seymour and William I'm McGinnis and, and Ty Law. Board, yeah, absolutely. Supporting cast – because we've oh. got a tight end. I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to the defense. I'm including okay. the defense in this discussion. Oh, okay, but, okay. But again, when I look at Everett and Tyler Higby, just combined, they're better than Gronk. I know Gronk had a couple of big catches late, but he's just this broken-down Frankenstein monster. I just don't know what you can expect from him Sunday against this team. And then now to the defense. It's still basically, basically the same defense that gave up 41 points to the backup quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles in last year's Super Bowl. It is. Basically it is. And it's definitely the same defense that in the fourth quarter gave up 24 points to a Patrick Mahomes boy, your guy, <laughs> who had the ball for a grand total of three minutes in that fourth quarter of the AFC Championship game in Kansas City. 24 points in three minutes, that's pretty scary. And that kid, that undrafted rookie who's now starting opposite Stephon Gilmore at corner, you want to mm -hmm. talk about where's Waldo? Sean McVay is going to be playing where's Waldo all day. Where is J.C. Jackson? Is he going to be singled up occasionally? And Robert Woods, trust me, they will go after him all day because in the end, the Chiefs finally started going after J.C. Jackson. And you remember the one drive when he had the two penalties and was yeah. consistently beaten and on he that gave drive. It, And he gave yeah. it a big catch across the middle. Yeah. And then remember what happened in – the NFC Championship game, Jared Goff loves Brandon Cooks. He threw him seven balls, mm -hmm. and he caught seven for 104 against the Saints, who are pretty good right. on defense. The Saints are better on defense than New England is to me. And then, obviously, speaking of being up against it, you know Wade Phillips very well. I know him pretty well. Can I, can I go all the way to kryptonite? Has he been Brady's kryptonite? I, I know Tom's had his way occasionally against Wade, but Wade's – done some numbers, some some sort of Rex Ryan-like numbers on Tom mm -hmm. Brady. And I hark back to the last playoff loss for Tom Brady was at Denver in that 2015, obviously that... Um, AFC Championship yeah, game. The, I'm talking about ahead of the Super Bowl, last time they mm -hmm. didn't get to the Super Bowl. And they were all over Brady. He got hit 17 times in that game. As you pointed out earlier this week, they pushed the pocket with, who was it, Malik Jackson? and Malik Jackson yeah, and Derek Wolf inside. Derek Wolf inside. And now you've got two, two of the greatest pocket pushers in the game, the two best, mm -hmm. in Donald and Sue. And what did Wade Phillips say? Well, then I was able to get all kinds of pressure, looping pressure with my edge rushers, Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware, and they had great corners. And Tom Brady had a long, hard day that day. He had a QBR grand total of 37, scale of 0 to 100. He was throwing into the end zone at the end of the game on a two-point conversion try that failed to tie the game at 20 to 20. So it took that much of a defensive effort just to keep the game, you know, put you in a 20 to 18 advantage. But mm -hmm. Tom Brady said on Monday night, this is the best D-line in pro football, and it is, that he's going up against. And he said these are two of the best interceptors in the history of pro football, and they just are. Tlaib and Marcus Peters are really good at ball hawking. They, they're they different are. because one's just a – Marcus Peters, you know, is just a clue or a guesser. Yeah. But when he guesses yeah. right, boy, he can pick six guess right, can he? Yes, and he will. Tlaib, obviously, was a Patriot, so he's actually practiced against Tom. He knows Tom. And I just have a sneaking suspicion they're going to use Tlaib a lot on Julian Edelman, who is obviously Tom's go-to guy, his favorite target. No, nah, that's, that's not a good, Skip, I, that's not I, a good matchup for thinking, Tlaib. I'm thinking they'll, gonna, they'll try that some, just to see if they can eliminate Edelman completely. But go ahead. Go ahead. I don't think that's a good matchup for Tlaib. Tlaib matches up better against big physical receivers. Guys, uh, Antonio Brown, those fast guys, Odell Beckham, they would cause him a problem. Edelman would cause him a problem in the middle uh, and the slot because there's so much space and he's so quick. Mm. But I tell you something that need you you need to watch, Skip. 
And Dominican Sue and Aaron Donald, they like to swim a lot because they like to get off the ball quick and try to get upfield and get to your quarterback. The thing that the Patriots do very well is that they punish you for one of your weaknesses. You got to be careful swimming because you swim out of one hole and here come the Patriots pulling a guy with a running back behind him right in the hole that you just vacated from. So I think you need to see less swimming from Ndamukong Sue and Aaron Donald, but they've had such great success this season. Aaron Donald led the league in sacks with 20 and a half. There's a reason. He jumps off the ball, gets on an edge, and he gets up field in a hurry. That could be to their disadvantage in a game like this. You're probably going to have to play it a lot more straight up, right down the middle. And I know it's going to take, uh, take you a little longer to get to the quarterback, but you won't leave the gaping holes in the run game that the Patriots can take advantage of. Okay, and yet, what I thought Wade did the best at New Orleans in their championship game was, mm -hmm. what do the Patriots gash you with the most with the little swing passes out of the backfield yes. to James White or yes. Cordero or even to Burkhead? And I thought Wade did a nice job using Sue and Fowler to go after the back. If the back swung, at one point, a couple times, Sue just went after Kamara, right. just went and hit him. And it knocked Drew Brees off rhythm for a second where he had to look away and try mm -hmm. to go upfield with it. And it just shook up the rhythm of the offense. So I think they'll do that quite a bit. And so my bottom line is Brady's greatest challenge in a Super Bowl will be this Sunday. I believe if he wins it, it will be his greatest achievement. And I believe he will win it because I believe he's been on a mission all season long to to get even with what happened in last year's Super Bowl thanks to Bill Belichick. I think he's he's been on a mission to get even with his head coach for not playing Malcolm Butler in last year's Super Bowl because Tom Brady had a spectacular game. All-time playoff record, 505, 33 points, the most uh, Super Bowl losers ever scored. And he, as you say, again and again, took the L, I think in large part because Malcolm Butler somehow got doghouse for the game and didn't play a single snap. And I think it really motivated almost a la Deflategate Tom Brady through this year. He's back where he started last year, and he wants to right the wrong of the loss to the Eagles because he thinks, I believe, that they were better than the Eagles, that they should have won that game. Mm -hmm. so, so now he'll be on a mission to just simply win in spite of Belichick's defense, to outscore Sean McVay. And I believe he will. And I think Sean McVay will be able to play Madden against Belichick's defense while Tom Brady will be playing chess against Wade Phillips. Mm. And I believe chess will beat Madden in this game because slowly but surely, Tom Brady will figure out how to pick apart the Rams' defense in many mm -hmm. uh, sort of unforeseen little ways. Here, there, to, to your point, some run plays, some pass plays we're not expecting. I expect Philip Dorsett to be more of a factor than he has been. I think he's going to get deep a couple of times, and Tom will have just enough time to hit him deep. And I believe that over time, he will win the game of keep away. Not like he did against Patrick Mahomes, but I think the Patriots will go 35 to 25 minutes in time of possession. And do you realize through those first two playoff games, New England is 20 of 33 on third down against the Chargers and the Chiefs. 20 of 33, that's 61 well, you got to hold them under 50% if you want to win this game on Sunday. Well, you better. Yeah, if, if you allow them to convert 60% or, as, like you said, 13 of 19 at Kansas City. You're losing. Brady's going to lose that. So, to me, I have never seen Tom Brady any better than he was against the Chargers and the Chiefs. I think he's playing at the highest combined mental, physical level we've ever seen him play okay. quarterback. And I think that's the guy you're going to see. I think the guy you're going to see is the guy who walked into the facility a couple of weeks back, according to NFL <laughs> Network, and said to nobody in particular, I'm the <laughs> baddest man on the planet, except he said the baddest MF on the planet, right? <laughs> and yes, he did. That's the guy who's Michael Jordan in sheep's clothing. That's the guy who's a cold-blooded assassin disguised as the corny dad down the street. Mm -hmm. That's the guy you're going to see. Psycho Tom's going to emerge once again on Sunday against his, his greatest challenge, and I believe that, that he will ultimately just outscore Sean McVay. That's what it comes down to to me, and that ultimately I'm going to take Tom Brady over Jared Goff. I think Jared Goff somewhere in the fourth quarter will make one big mistake because he's Jared Goff, and he's, he's a nice kid, and he's a, he's a good player. I don't think he's anywhere near the, the level of Super Bowl competitor that Tom Brady is. So 
I, you know what? I'm back to my bottom line. I tell you week after week, there's one man in sports I do not bet against. Yep. And it's Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. I am not betting against him. I am taking the Patriots 37 to 35. I've got higher score than you do. You said 33 yeah. to 30. I'm going 37 yeah. to 35. And I believe that you dared to bet a case on that or more. Yes. Yes. Really? More than one? Put two on it. Put two says Shannon Sharp, the Hall of Famer, Confident. says two. Yeah. I will accept that bet, thank you very much. <laughs> Do I get two and a half points? You get nothing and like it. Whoa, what's up? Yeah. Come on, yeah. this is you Super get Bowl. nothing, nope. I'm, I'm going back to bet Chris. Do I get three and a half <laughs> points, right? That wasn't the line. No, that I, was the line he was thinking about. Should have been. Yeah, but if you know, if you remember in the previous eight Super Bowls, the Patriots have only scored three points in all of those games. So what that tells me that Coach Belichick wants to play his way into the ball game. Don't do anything you're, crazy. You're about in the not, first, let's not first hold quarter. on to the football yeah, right. and try to get big plays down the field. No razzle dazzle. We don't want. We're not going to try to win the game in the first quarter. We just don't want to lose it in the first quarter. I don't know. I, I saw a new Tom Brady against the Chargers and Chiefs early on because I saw a new Bill Belichick. I said Super Bowl. Yeah, well, Bill Belichick finally started winning pregame tosses and saying, you know what? <laughs> Maybe I should let the greatest quarterback in history have the football first. Maybe I should. Oh, Maybe that's, what, should that's what he's first. thinking? Yeah, maybing I should for once. Maybe I'm seeing So what is he going to do, son, if they win the toss? They're the visitors. They get to call it. They'll call heads. They will call heads. Maybe they'll win heads. It usually comes up heads. I don't know why. And, just and, the, and, and what will they do? Will they take the ball or defer? Well, that will be a significant choice for the, the coach of Tom Brady, who I sometimes wonder if he really wants Tom Brady to win a sixth <laughs> Super Bowl, even though they're joined at the hip. But I don't know. Maybe he'll defer. And maybe yeah. I will quickly do an all-caps tweet. What are you doing, Bill Belichick? First of all, this is not a Jerry Jones Jason Garrett situation where Jerry wants all the credit with none of the culpability for losing. Mm. When Tom Brady loses, Coach Belichick loses. When Coach Belichick wins, Tom Brady wins. So I don't really think Coach Belichick was out there being, as you termed the new word, sabotage G. last G. year. Nor do I believe he will sabotage or be sabotage this year. I don't know. Sometimes I think Bill's just, he's satisfied he got his five. And he just doesn't want to see Brady get a sixth. Man, Five stop playing. Pretty good, you know. Skip. Yeah. What? So if Brady gets a ring, Coach Belichick does it. If Coach Belichick gets a ring, Tom Brady does it. Who did Coach Belichick want to win this ring for him this year? Jimmy okay, Garoppolo. But, skip. Right. Skip. But that okay. So what? It was an arranged marriage. <laughs> that wasn't Coach Belichick's first, second love. That's not who he wanted to be with. Okay, mm -hmm. I get it. But they're making the vote the best of this situation. I think Tom Brady's making the best of this situation. And I think Belichick arguably is the luckiest coach in NFL history to have had Tom Brady because, as we've mentioned earlier this week, the Patriots have played now in eight Super Bowls going into ninth. And in those eight Super Bowls, the average margin of victory is 4.25 points. Yeah, one so, possession. So that means that every game came down to this play or that play. Yes. And mostly Tom Brady made the plays that won the game because mm -hmm. he's got five rings thanks to five game-winning drives in fourth quarter or overtime. So once again, I think Bill Belichick's going to be very lucky to have a Tom Brady to cancel out, to make up for to overcome the defense that he's putting on the field, which is torchable. It's flammable, as you, you've seen regularly this year. But they just seem to always come down with a play when they need to. They always, in the most opportune of times, or when you see all hope is lost, seems all hope is lost, somehow that defense rises to the occasion, occasion and they make a play. And what happened in overtime at Kansas City? Three they times. got the ball, and my homeboys never touched the field. Okay, three times on not just third and eight or third and seven. It was third and ten three straight yes. times. And Tom Brady hit Edelman twice and Gronk once for huge yes. plays that put mm -hmm. them in position to close the deal. And by the way, when I to finish out the supporting cast, I realized that that um, obviously Sony Michelle's turned into a 
I'm just going to call him a solid rookie back. He's he's mm-hmm. pretty good, but but seriously, is he C.J. Anderson? We didn't even really get into yeah. C.J. Is, is he Todd Gurley? Even though Gurley seems to have been hurt, I don't think he's hurt now. So running game edge goes big to the Rams, right? Well, here's the thing about Todd Gurley, Skip. If you remember when he had all those weeks off leading into the divisional round, he put together a big game against the Cowboys. When he only had one week of rest, uh, things didn't go quite as well against the Saints. Okay, so now he has that two-week period. Advantage so we'll see. If he doesn't get the lion's share of the carries, that mm-hmm. should tell you something, Skip. In this game of this magnitude, if he's not carrying the lion's share of the work, Something has to be wrong. Wouldn't you assume that? I just don't know for sure. But to me, I think Sean McVay saw CJ as the hotter of the backs Mm. in that he's going to ride the horse that became CJ because CJ's been a beast of a horse, man. Yeah. He's been their driving force. And, and again, if they win this game the way you say, I think CJ's got a good shot of being MVP of this game. Oh, he absolutely does. And if he is the MVP of this game, it will be the most unlikely off-the-couch MVP <laughs> in Super Bowl history. Am I right? Because yeah. on December, yes. what, 16th, he was still on the couch? Yep. Correct. Having been cut by, what, three teams this year? Yeah, three the teams. The Broncos, the Carolina, Carolina, and, and the Raiders. Raiders. That's a good yes. story. Wow. I'd say that'd be an incredible story. But the better story is going to be number 12, yeah. once again. Sorry yeah, to Yeah, you, so you think. That. So we've got two cases of do. Thank you very much. The Breakfast of Champions, the Nectar of the Gods, Diet Mountain Dew. Well, too bad you won't be having nothing to drink for your breakfast. Really? Because them cases of dew will be in my dressing room. Well, that would be a first. Okay. We'll have to see about that. (laughs) It won't be the last. Uh, Okay. We are going to talk more about the Super Bowl a bit later in the show, but we have been patiently waiting. Here we go. LeBron is back, and these guys are about to give out some letter grades for the king. I kind of feel like I know where <laughs> Shannon's going, but what will Skip say? What yeah. great next. No mercy. Hey guys, Jenny Taft here, and thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. If you're looking for more Super Bowl Sunday fun, well, here's your answer. During the game, come hang out with us at the Fox Sports Super Bowl party. From in-depth analysis to hilarious bet payoffs, this is sure to be the craziest Super Bowl event you've ever seen. Join in on the fun with Mark Shalareth, Dean Blandino, TJ Hushmanzada, and Jason McIntyre on the Fox Sports Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages or foxsports.com starting at 6.15 p.m. Eastern. No mercy. He's back. LeBron made his return last night against the Clippers after missing the last 17 games, and the Lakers definitely needed him. LeBron nearly had a visit from Miss Trip Dub. Finishing with 24 points, 14 rebounds, 9 assists. He played 40 minutes and said after the game he felt about 80%. Let's take a listen to the King on his return. I'm not feeling, you know, particularly great right now. Uh, I'm definitely ecstatic about being back out there with my guys and, and getting a great roll win uh, versus a team that we're, you know, kind of, you know, climbing, you know, during, in the playoff race. But, you know, after being out five weeks, you know, I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling it right now. I wish I could click my shoes together and be home right now in my bed. So, uh, but it was, a, it was great to be back out there. I love clothes. I love suits, but I didn't come here to put on a suit every day. I come here to put on a jersey and some shorts. That's what I came here to do and lead a, a team, uh, you know, the best way I know how. So, you know, that's, that's the frustration part when you are seeing your team struggle and you know how much you can help them and you can't do anything in a suit and tie. So, you know, that's where the, that's where the negativity starts to creep into the mind. All right, Shannon, your guy is back. I see the smile. What grade would you give LeBron for last night's game, his return? He told you, Skip Bayless. He told you, say, the quiet before the storm. There's a hush over the land, and then there's a huge swelling up. And it touched down last night. Oh, and Staples. Oh, bro, go Jay would get it to him. I'm going to give him a B, Skip Bayless. I'm going to temper. I wanted to give him an A, but I'm going to give him a B because I saw that he lacked some explosiveness. Obviously, he wasn't willing to to step on the gas for the entirety of the game. Now, he did show some bursts of getting to the basket, had a nice James Harden, one, two step, step back. But Skip, look, it's just a matter of time that he get his legs up under him and he feels comfortable putting the pedal to the metal 
it's going to be over for the Western Conference. I told you this was going to happen. Not the whole I love Western the supporting cast. I love what Ray John Rondo did. Yep. What, 14 points, 13, mm -hmm. 13 assists. Yep. Ingram okay. was uh, 19 points on 7 to 12 shooting. Yep. I think that was impressed with Brandon Ingram for the simple fact he knows his name is in this tra trade discussion, and he played through it. And my guy, old Lance Guitar Stevens, yeah, had that thing humming last night. I thought, you I thought that was Slash of Guns and Roses on the on that electric guitar. Really? Jimmy Hendrix a little bit. Eric Clapton, you know, some of the greatest guitar players. B.B. Wow. King. You Google. But you know what, Skelt Bayless is just. You Google. <laughs> yeah. I know you were sick last night. Old Goat James giving it to him. But sick. I know, uh -huh. I know what happened in the fourth quarter. They weren't making shots, and then all of a sudden they didn't want to defend. But LeBron James said, I want to go to overtime because huh. I want to show y'all what I'm made of. Huh. Gave him four points, two assists, two rebs. Really? You saw it, Skip Bayless. Uh, I did. I On saw a normal it. I night, yep. if LeBron James had been 100% healthy, that's a mid to high point triple double. He still should have had one. Yeah. JaVale blew his oop uh, uh, assist. That would have been 10. That. I give you that. He should have done But on a normal yep. night, he's healthy. That's easily a 35 to 40 point triple dub, mm. and you know it. Mm. Is that all you got? I got plenty more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to start right here. We had more weirdness from LeWeird James oh, yesterday yeah. because Stop, I, I don't get it, man. Maybe he watched Undisputed yesterday. Maybe. Is that possible? Yeah, you challenged him. I was challenging. I was calling him out like, what are you doing? I'm You're LeBron you. freaking James. That's what I kept saying. Where are you? Your coach after practice two days ago said, he looked pretty good. He looked pretty good in the practice before this practice. No, he said he looked great. He didn't say pretty good. He said he looked well, great. But he was saying he was moving just fine. He said he could see yep. no issues whatsoever with the groin. And I guess LeBron woke up yesterday and said, you know what? They're yeah. right. I, I should just play. It's the Clippers. It is the team just above them in the standings. The last team that's in the playoffs is the Clippers. The Lakers out of the playoffs, but now they've jumped up to tie them. So, yep. way to go, Goat James. Faux Goat <laughs> James, as I call him. I mean, that was good. I'm glad he decided to show up last night. And in the big – but by the way, I, did you – he he made a, a Wizard of Oz reference after the game? I didn't know he'd know that movie. I liked it. Oh, yeah, he clicked his shoes. Yeah. There's no place like home. Wow. There's no place like home. How does he know like that home. movie? It's <laughs> It's a cla it's all time great. I could watch it, it tonight. Me it's one too. of my favorites. Has there ever Don't been do a it anymore. You already watched story? it a thousand oh. times. Yeah, I've, I've watched it a thousand times, but it's like the all time underdog so team good. story, right? Oh, it's a great yeah. team story. Way to go. I'm with you, so, now back to grade for last night. I'm with you, but for very, very different reasons. What? I'm going to give Goat James a B for his play last <laughs> night because. Predictably, I thought he was a little rusty early because he played eight early minutes with three turnovers, which was not great. He did not shoot the ball from distance very well. He's one for six for three, but that's all predictable. I get all that. And yet, I thought he moved pretty much like his normal self. There were I'm going to give him what he said, 80% of yes. confidence in his groin. There were sometimes it looked mm -hmm. like he was protecting a little bit, like he wouldn't go to the fifth gear. He'd just try to keep it in fourth right. gear. But those are, mm -hmm. you know, 24, 14, and 9. That's I, that's pretty good. I'm going to give you a real solid B for that. And I did love the fact that I finally got to see somebody run the point for the Lakers last night because he was running point guard, point forward, point center. It's just fun for me. I appreciate the artistry of LeBron distributing the basketball. He he conducts that offense. And you know what? Yes. Those, those kids all shoot it with more confidence when LeBron has delivered the basketball to them. It's just, it's a cool thing to watch. And to your point, I thought the kids showed no distraction last night, no right. let down, no, no pouting or, or disengagement because the, it's highly possible that in a few days they're all going to be Pelicans. And right. yet th that didn't show last night. Now, to my issue of why I wouldn't give LeBron an A- minus or even an A for last night, he's got to close these deals. And once again, in the fourth quarter, when it was time to close, he couldn't close it because, remember, they're up 12 after three quarters, and then I'm going to go mm -hmm. all the way down. They had big leads. They went up to 14 with 10.57 left, but, but they're up seven with 1.57 left. 
that's, again, it's actually the Clippers' home game, but you're in your building, and it felt like it was more of a Laker crowd last night than a Clipper crowd. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. you got to close that, and they allow a 7-0 Clippers run to take it to overtime. So here's the flashpoint. They stopped defending, Skip. Huh? Yeah, well, they stopped thank defending. You. Thank you. I needed that entree to what I'm about to, the point I'm about to make. <laughs> If we could see what happened, LeBron actually set up Rondo for a wide open three that could have been the dagger. It could have iced yes. it right there. And he kicked it back to Rondo, who misses the shot, as you see right here. Missed it really badly. Almost shot an air ball. And watch Goat mm -hmm. James. He backpedals, backpedals. He goes in the lane and plays his cavalier defense, as in, look, look who his man is. His man was Tobias Harris. We could maybe see that again. This is Tobias Harris. We don't, LeBron do we know is for standing sure? in the Hold lane. Do, do we know for certain yes. that Tobias Harris yes. was his man? You could just see the play unfolding. And I don't know if LeBron was let down because Rondo didn't even come close to making the three. But LeBron, and it's probably he's gassed at that point. He probably I think Lou Williams was LeBron's no, man. No, he was not. You know LeBron's not guarding any <laughs> Lou Williams. He had Tobias Harris, and he does what he did so often last year in Cleveland, play cavalier defense, as in, I don't really care that much. He went and stood in the lane. I'm like, what are you doing? And Tobias yeah. says, really? Okay, really? Skip, I will concede that. Yeah. That and was a goofball move. It. Okay. So a two pointer don't tie a two pointer doesn't tie you. It doesn't beat you. No, it doesn't. Guard the three point line. You, you got to guard your man, LeBron. Just and again, I know you're back after whatever it was 35 days, and you're not really yeah. in game shape. Five weeks. I get that. I get that. But to LeBron's credit, with 3.7 seconds left in regulation, he did what I beat the table for him to do. He had the guts to put his head down and drive the basketball on Tobias Harris. If we could see this play. And he's driving it, and he's driving it, and Tobias made a really shrewd operator play because he got all ball. And the ball yeah, but he grabbed his arm. Tobias grabbed LeBron's right arm not. with his left arm. You it saw was, that hook. It was clean as a whistle, and then the ball accidentally tips off LeBron's right hand out of bounds, and LeBron just couldn't give it up. Like, I didn't knock the ball. Yes, you did. You knocked the ball out of bounds, so we are going to overtime. But LeBron, bottom line, okay. had the nerve, had the guts to drive it because you know what usually happens? You get that foul call, and that means LeBron's going to have to go stand there by himself with virtually no time on the clock and make one of two free throws to win the game. And I that just no don't problem. know. I don't know. I'm, I'm doing this. I know. Watching my TV because I don't know if he's got that in him. Surely he could have made one of them. That's but old. Yeah. But you know what? Wh whatever. But, again, in, I, I'm going to give him this credit. In overtime, he did shoot a fadeaway, like a hard fadeaway where he was yeah. like, faded the other way from the basket, like he did against Toronto last year. We haven't seen many of those this year, but he shot it and he made it, and that gave him a 120 to 118 lead. Now could we get to the other flash point of this game? This happened with 45 seconds left. Lance Stevenson drives the basketball on Big Bobon, and Bobon's a monstrously big human being. And what did Lance do? He just cold cocks him with a left elbow right in the face. Cheekbone. Just just gave him a shot of shots. Yeah. And you know what? This was nearly as bad a blown call as the Saints Rams call was. Ooh. And here's another LA team that benefited because that that is just flat out offensive foul, wipe off the bucket, and it's Clippers basketball. Instead, they gave Lance, they, they let him get the foul, get to the free. They gave him the basket yeah. and let him shoot the free throw, which he made. So it yep. goes from Three, to, you know, it's, it's a two-point game, and all of a sudden, it's a five-point game. So that was the basketball yep. team game right there. What, what referee crew would give that play to Lance? And it's Lance and, of all people. Yeah. He, and the thing is, Skip, it's almost respect. like he did it intentionally. Yeah. What, what are you doing? He just, he just, just get shot off right in the he, cheekbone. It's called, it's called creating space. Oh, well, he created space. He dropped Bobon he onto his knees is what he did. Poor Bobon. He's like the gentlest soul in the NBA. Really a poor sweet Bobo. kid. And poor Bobon, you know. And how do you get away with that call? So, Goat James got away with one there, or they just might have lost that game. Are we going to talk about what Goat James did in overtime? Yeah, he was. Do you wanna, do, I, are I you going to just, gonna address that? You, he made that Two shot. for two. He made that shot with 115 left, and that stood up as this sort of quasi game winner. Right. But, but at the very end. What about them rebounds? Yeah. He what about them assists? Big. He's 6'9, 260. So, you know what? 
I tell you, every day we talk about this, he should <laughs> average at least 10 rebounds a game. And that was why last night. He had 14. He should, he should get 13 or 14 every game. Right. I don't know. Right? But I think the thing is, with the young guys, is that when you say they play better, I think LeBron James gets them the ball in better spots. Because he's such yep. an efficient and such a proficient passer, he, he knows where to get these guys the ball in their most comfortable area. And so they, they do seem to play better. But I was I, we hadn't seen this from Brandon Ingram play this well beside LeBron. Normally it's Kuzma. Yep. But for Brandon to go 7 to 12, I thought he played really well last night. Yeah, and the irony was Kuzma really didn't shoot it very well, and he's the guy who usually – just lights up for LeBron. He wants to please yes, the king. absolutely. Right? So it's still highly possible, again, LA Times report yesterday, that the Lakers have offered, as I said from the start, what they should offer, Lonzo and Kuzma and Brandon Ingram and your man Zubats and a first-rounder. Just they put it right on the table for the Pelicans, and the Pelicans are fools if they don't take that. They should take yeah. it and run with it right now because they're not going to get a better offer simply because Rich Paul has made it crystal clear to Celtics or Knicks or whomever else that there is no Rental. way that Anthony Davis is going to sign long-term with Boston or New York or wherever. He's rental properly, He's rental property yep. with no hopes of ownership. Mm -hmm. So yep. just so you know, you're going to be able to live here, but I'm never selling correct. to you. That is correct. So why wouldn't the Pelicans just swallow the pride that's now bubbled to the surface and just say, you Because, know as you mentioned, pride. Pride. Anthony know. Davis is trying to hold us up. That's what Make thinking. us trade him yeah. to where he wants to, yep. and we're upset, even though they told us this summer yep. we would not sign the extension and we wanted to move on and where we wanted to move on to. Yep. So that would be a great deal for the Pelicans. And I got to tell you, you still got – Drew Holiday, and you still got Julius Randle and Miritich. You put those four kids in the middle of that, maybe not this year, but next year and the next, they would become a contender. They would be. That'd be a good basketball team. Yes. <sighs> when LeBron was and asked about it. we'll be even better basketball team with AD. Well, exactly. He that's... was asked about AD, and he said, I'm not going to talk about it. It's just fantasy basketball until mm. something Yeah, we happens. don't talk about stuff like that, Skip, because mm -hmm. they're always trying to get us for tampering. Everybody got something to say about LeBron, so he's right. He's not talking about AD. Mm. Yeah, but we right. know what's about to happen. Yeah, we know somebody who's been tampering on this show for three months. Am I right? Why don't you get fined? What am I, what am I doing tampering? <laughs> you ask me a question. I yeah. say this would be a great trade for the Lakers. Uh -huh. I, I, right. I'm just a guy. Yeah, Just, just a guy. A guy. Mm -hmm. Just a guy. I'm going to keep <laughs> referring to you as just a guy. No mercy. So LeBron's return yesterday in yep. the NBA wasn't the only big no. news. The Knicks traded Kristaps Porzingis and three other players to the Mavericks for a package that included <coughs> Dennis Smith Jr. and DeAndre Jordan. Reports say Porzingis questioned the direction of the team. The two sides met yesterday, and then the Knicks felt that he wanted out of New York. Porzingis is the marquee name in the deal, but he's been out all season after tearing his ACL last year. Shannon, who got the better end of this trade? Well, we're going to have to wait till the summer of 2019 before we find out. Because what the Knicks did by getting Chris uh, Przingas and getting Hardaway and Courtly Lee out of there, they've created over $70 million in cap space. Now, if you land KD, you land Kyrie, or you get a, a, a Kawhi, well, clearly they won the deal. There's no question about that. And then you think that if they can land the number one draft pick, maybe they swing that and says, okay, uh, Pelicans, what about this for AD? Mm -hmm. Now you're really in the money. But for me... It's become abundantly clear that Przingis didn't want to be there, Skip. Um, his brother, and from what I'm hearing, is that his brother and Kristoff was making it very, very difficult about what they wanted, what they weren't going to do, and what they were going to do. So I thought the Knicks was, was absolutely right to move on. Because you're not, first of all, dude, you're seven foot three and you're coming off an ACL injury. We don't really have a whole lot of literature, Skip. Guys this tall having this type of injury and coming back and being productive. So normally when guys start having knee injuries, he's a tall, skinny kid. Yep. I believe he's more susceptible for having a reoccurring injury. So the Knicks, I think the Knicks, if they can get Kevin Durant, get one. I'm not saying both. Now, 
you get sweepstakes if you get both of them, Kyrie, yep. KD, or Jimmy Butler, or Kawhi, somebody like that. You get two guys, you've hit sweepstakes. You get one, you won the deal. But you see what happened, Skip? DeAndre Jordan wasn't causing no fuss. He didn't want to get traded. See, teams will do what we say is in the best interest of the team. But AD is saying, I want to do it in the best interest of Team AD. Yep. And everybody got a problem with that. Hmm. Team Clutch, right? Yeah. yeah. Take over. We're about to take over the, the game. You know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I just have a gut feeling after I slept on this that the New York Knicks finally did something really right yesterday. <laughs> they made a bold move because it was bold. They did. Because they had it was an almost a knee jerk bold move of they he went in yesterday morning and they just said, you know what, this this is just going nowhere. The brothers right. the agent sure. doesn't feel right. They don't like how he's rehabbing, what how conscientious he's been about trying to get back. The deal's been on the table probably for a while. And they just called Mark Cuban and just said, hey, done. You can have him for what we talked about. And again, do I like Porzingis and Doncic together? Because Doncic wants to play point. Mm. And, and those two pick and rolling because they like each other, they know each other. Great. Hey, th they will wreak some havoc. But here's my thought on Porzingis. I've never been quite sold on him as a superstar. Star, I give you. I agree. Superstar. Is he that guy? Does he have that cold-blooded assassin in him? Obviously, he is, as Kevin Durant nicknamed him, the unicorn, because he is 7'3", and he has guard skills at 7 feet 3 inches tall. Very skilled. Yeah. We never seen anything quite like that. This is beyond Dirk, right? This because he's got, <laughs> yes. what, at least 3 inches on Dirk. 3 yeah. inches. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, what's inside him? Does the fire burn? Cold-blooded? I, I don't know. I I don't get that sense yet. Maybe it's too soon to draw that conclusion. Maybe he'll find himself more in Dallas than he did with the Knicks. But you're right about 7-3 in the injuries. You sold on that? You're going to bet long-term on that? No. No. So the Knicks made a great move, a, a quick, bold move, to just clear the decks and start over with $71 million of cap room. So what's my gut feeling? This is just gut. And again, so much is going to have to unravel because we don't know how Golden State, what's their fate at the end of the year? Are they going to win another championship or are they going to come up short? How will that affect Kevin Durant's mentality going into the summer? I have no idea. What about Kyrie's mentality? He's, he's about as unpredictable as there is in, mm -hmm. of the superstars in the NBA. But my gut feeling is, having talked to people who know Kevin, he does have it deep in his heart that he'd like to play in the Big Apple, in the Mecca, in Madison yes. Square Garden. So would that surprise me? No. And Skip, for me, I believe it's more likely if they win the championship, Kevin okay. Durant leaves. All right, that well could be. I, I don't know how to factor that into his psyche. But you could be right about that. If yeah, you're probably right. If they lose, he might think I got unfinished business. I, here. Yeah, I, I got I got but, unfinished business yeah, here. But don't. I'm, I am not discounting what happened between him and Draymond. Mm -hmm. It's still on the. I'm, I'm saying back burner. It might even be on the front burner still. But Skip, for me, for the Knicks to make a move like this, no matter what you and I think of Przingis, he was their franchise player, and he was coming off a very significant injury. But for them to make this move so quickly. They've got to know something we don't. Maybe. They've been told something. Yep. No, you could be right. So that brings us to the second superstar slot that's open. Kyrie Irving grew up all over the place. He was in Australia for a while, but New Jersey, mm -hmm. went to high school. He, he's, he's a New York kind of kid, and he's got yes. that in his heart. So would he like to play the Mecca, play the Garden? Sure he would. And what do I keep seeing? I've, I've said on the show several times, in fact, when the Mavericks were there the other night, it was Dirk's turn to be the visiting superstar. And right. Madison Square Garden, ironically, is still a destination for stars, but they're always playing for the other team. For the, the other visiting team. team, right? <laughs> but everybody and, wants to play their best in Madison Square Garden, right? And Skip, the thing is, is that the fans want, they want their own superstar. Yeah. 
you see, you see how they treat the opposing team superstar? Yeah. So imagine if they have I one agree. for their own, the kind of crowd, the kind of ovation yeah. that they would see receive on a nightly basis if they had a Kyrie, yeah. if they had a KD to cheer on as opposed to having LeBron or having a, a KD or Steph mm -hmm. come into their building and light them up to have their own guy mm -hmm. lighting up the opposing team. Okay. And I remain a big fan of David Fisdales. I know the Knicks I have too. just been awful of late, but that's not all bad because they are now obviously right in the running for Zion with the first overall sure. pick. So David Fisdale, to me, as he proved as an assistant to Spolster in Miami, LeBron and Dwayne Wade loved him. He was kind of their go-to yes. guy. He's yes. the guy they wanted to commiserate with and talk with and the stra deep strategy guy and kind of their big brother figure was Fizdale. Mm -hmm. So he's a magnet for these guys. They're, they're going to want to play yes. there. It's not like they yes. have some coach that nobody likes and he's on the outs with management or whatever. This works. Agree. This is good. This feels like now it is a mecca destination with David Fizdale as the head coach. And let's say they... What if they did... What if they landed Kevin Durant and Kyrie, which I don't think is pie in the sky... And then, I don't either. What if they land the first all overall pick and they got Zion? Those three. Do, hold on. Hold, okay. You make a very interesting point. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, for this discussion, they get Kyrie and they get KD in free agency and they have the number one ping pong ball. Are you willing to, to trade that and say, okay, let me have AD or Jimmy or Kawhi or. Okay, I mean, just, what, what would you do with it? I would take Zion. I've seen enough. And Steve Kerr <laughs> already went LeBron with Zion, and obviously they're very different basketball players. Right. But just an explosion. Just, what does he weigh? Three something? 285. 285. I thought he's a little over three. He, he looks sometimes like he's a little over three. He's the second. If he was in the NBA, he'd be the second heaviest behind Bobine. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm taking that guy, uh -huh. and I'm pairing him up with the two superstars, or with the three of them, and all of a sudden, you are back on the map. I okay, think, what about yeah. what about if the Pelicans don't move Anthony Davis before the trade deadline? Well, again, he has one more year. Use and the Pelican says, okay, give me Zion, give me your future number one pick and another player. Okay, but Would are you, you going to trade Zion Williamson for a rental of AD for a year? Well, 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 oh, you might get him there. You know, everybody thought Paul George was going to be a rental. Maybe. I mean, Maybe it's not skip. It's not like New York. It's not like New York is Cleveland or Sacramento. Wait, a, I thought you were Team LeBron. I am, but I'm, your own skip, plan? I'm just skip. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Well, that's devils right there. That's, that's okay. Bad. Well, how about I just be an advocate? Huh? Pelicans, you go ahead and trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. don't put these ideas out, Shannon. Be careful. No, I mean, you're gonna burn your bridge. Whew. I mean, LeBron's not gonna return your phone call. Well, Skip, I want I want the Lakers to get AD really really bad, but I just do not believe that the the Pelicans want to deal with the Lakers because of how AD has handled this situation, making it publicly, even though he told him in private, yeah, he would not resign and he wanted to go to LA. Okay, maybe, but for once since like 1970, the Knicks finally made a great bold move. Way yes. to go! But it's only going to be, it's only a I great know. move, I got, Skip. I just you got to get feeling. one. I got a gut feeling they're, they're going to land two. Okay. Here we go. How happy are those Knicks fans listening to both of you guys be positive about the future? So, <laughs> we got something to look forward to this weekend. Tom Brady, could he win ring number six on Sunday? TJ Hushmanzada is here. He's going to make his pick. No mercy. And back to the Super Bowl we go. The Patriots are a slight two and a half point favorite Sunday against the Rams. History is definitely on New England's side. They're playing in their third straight Super Bowl. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick are going to their ninth together. On the other side, the Rams are in their first Super Bowl since 2001. We're joined by FS1 NFL analyst and former Pro Bowl receiver, yep. DJ Hushmanzada. Mm -hmm. Good to have you with us. Way to go. Thanks Thank for being here. So. I'm guessing you heard these two, their picks from earlier today. Shannon went with the Rams. Skip going with the Patriots. I'm so going, I'm going with Tom Brady. Thank you. Oh, you, I'm yeah. sorry. Just to be clear about that. Tom Brady, Tom Brady is, Brady is not a team. No, he, you can't he just pick the one guy. Yeah. Well, let's see what TJ has to right. say. Who are you going with Sunday? 
Oh man, I'm with Shannon on this one. I'm going. I'm going with really? the Rams. Yeah. Uh, and disclaimer: I've picked against the Patriots every game so far, so, <laughs> so that's did, not so saying too. That's not yeah. saying too much. But <laughs> I just look at it as I see the score being. I actually think it's it's going to be a close game, but I think the Rams win 34-24. Really, by ten? Yeah. It, you you got to take away the, the Patriots' run game. You cannot allow them to run the ball. They they've come out against the Chargers. And the Chiefs, in first drive, they pretty much showed you what we are going to do. We're going to pound you. We're going to keep the ball away from this offense. And Wade Phillips is not going to allow Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, Josh McDaniels to just run the ball. And you got to make them one-dimensional. And I see them doing that. You got first four first-round picks on D-line. Aaron Bro- you got Michael Brockers, mm-hmm. Aaron Donald, and Dominick and Sue, and Dante Fowler. Those four guys got to show why they were top of the first-round picks. Mm-hmm. They have to make Tom Brady hitch, hold the ball, slide left or right. Hmm. They can't do that. It's going to be a long game. Hmm. That make you feel any better, Shannon? <laughs> I just have I have trust in Wade Phillips because I agree with you, TJ. To, the way to win this ball game, the Chargers and Kansas City let the Patriots have whatever they wanted. They didn't stop the run and they didn't get any pressure. Well, because if you can't stop the run, it's kind of hard because you don't want them. You don't want to try to get upfield because they're gashing you in that aspect. But what I like about what I've seen from the Rams is while they were giving up 5.1 yard per carry in the regular season, that's down to 2.3, and they shut down two top ten running, two top five running games in the Cowboys and the Saints in back to back weeks. Um, I don't believe the, the Patriots' running game is as dominant as those two running games. But what those two teams didn't have is Tom Brady. I'm going to put the ball, and I feel I feel it's like a sacrilegious to say this. I want the ball in Tom Brady's hand, and I want him to throw the ball 50 times. Because if they run the ball, if they get a balance of Tom Brady throwing it 30 and they run it 30, hmm. they got zero chance of winning nah, this you, game. You can't, you can't give them both. You have to take some away. And it's crazy when you look at the Patriots just how successful they are year in and year out with what <laughs> they have. And it's what you you have to make Tom Brady beat you via the air. And it's not so much that you put in the, you're putting the game in Tom Brady's hands. You're saying his receivers aren't good enough to consistently beat us yes. snap after snap after snap. Hmm. <clears throat> TJ, <laughs> you and Mr. Sharp will not <laughs> learn your lesson. You both picked against him twice already, and he played to me some of the highest level playoff football I have ever seen him play. I don't think he's ever been better than he was against the Chargers and certainly at the Chiefs when they went 13 for 19 on third down against two of the best pass rushes, two better pass rushes than the Rams have as far as just getting to the quarterback. The the Rams have a better D line and it should be able to take away the run. It should put the game in Tom Brady's hands. I just don't think that's a good thing for either of you two because he will figure out a way over time to beat this defense. I think he will slowly but surely pick this defense apart. And if you take Sonny Michelle away or Rex Burkhead, and by the way, they closed the game with Burkhead, not with Sonny Michelle. That's, that's, their, that's their closer. That's their, their ground and pound guy at the end of the game. And yet, I think that that the Rams will have their way with Belichick's defense. I think they'll be playing Madden, and I think Brady will just keep playing chess. And whatever you take away, it will open something else up. And I don't know. Some other receiver is going to have a big game because I think Wade will say, you just can't have Julian Edelman at will like Kansas City. That's what they did with Malcolm uh, Michael Thomas and the Saints. They They took him out of the game. Just took him. him That's correct. And Tlaib, as we all know, is there a better – press corner than Aqib Tlaib. And as Brady said on Monday night, are there two better interceptors? He called them two of the best in NFL history as a combo because Marcus Peters, again, he's a cluer and he'll he'll blow some coverages, but if he guesses right, he will go the other way with the football. And so can Tlaib. And Tlaib was obviously a Patriot, so he got to practice against Tom Brady. So this is Brady's biggest challenge. But I think some other receiver will start to hurt you. And I don't love his receiving core overall. I think Gronk's just a shell of himself. But Philip Dorsett could have a big game. He could get behind the Rams a couple times. I don't love the Rams' safeties. I think they're vulnerable at safety. I think Chris Hogan could sneak behind you once or twice for big plays. So, again, 
Brady has to win the game of keep away. Like he won it, it was 44 minutes to 21 minutes at Kansas City because of the overtime. But in this right. case, 35 to 25 because his defense is not very good. This is the worst supporting it's, cast he's taken to. But a if they, if, if the Rams are able to prevent the Patriots from running the ball, that time of possession will not be. It won't be in the favor of the Patriots mm-hmm. just won't because. Won't be lopsided, of, correct? They're just running the ball. The, the key is to. Ty Gurley must have 20 touches. It, it doesn't matter how he gets them. He needs to touch the ball 20 times. It, it's the, I don't know what happened against the Saints. I don't know if he was hurt or they just really felt like Anderson was doing a better job. That's what happened. Todd Gurley needs to touch the ball 20 times. Mm. He, 15 carries, six or seven receptions. He <clears> has to <throat> touch the ball 20 times. And the thing is, Skip, the thing why you want Brady to throw the ball, look, the, the running backs don't fumble. At least when Brady puts the ball up, I can get a tip pass here. I can get a carom off a guy's shoulder pass and get a pick. Michelle don't, doesn't put the ball on the ground. Those running backs don't fumble the ball. So if you don't sh- shut up their run and they somehow ended up with 30 rush attempts, 35 rush attempts, 150, 200 yards, that means Tom Brady is going to have a clean game. He'll end up going something like 23 of 30 for 285 yards and three touchdowns. They'll get blown. If they give the Patriots – what the Chargers and Kansas City gave them, it'll be an ugly it's game. It's over. Hmm. But and, and the Rams can get pressure without blitzing. And, and so you'll have extra guys in coverage. Those The pass they're completing against the Chiefs, where it's two-man, the Chiefs are playing, and Edelman keeps going across the middle, that's not going to be there for the Rams. They're not going to play two-man. They're going to man you up. They're going to have a robber in the middle of the field. So they're going to force you to do de- different things. They're going to press the receiver. So now Tom Brady has to hold the ball a split second longer. They can get that pass rush up the middle. It's really, if they double Aaron Donald and Dominic and Sue is, you don't have to sack Tom Brady. Make him feel you. He has to be able to smell you. He throws the ball. You touch him mm. so that he knows you're there and gets him a little antsy. Have you seen any Look, decline in Tom Brady this year because of age? No, 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 no. Thank Tom you. Brady is, uh, <laughs> I, Tom Brady, he still looks the same. He throws the ball the same. He's better because he's more mature mentally, smarter yep. mentally. Now, there's no decline in Tom Brady at all. Mm, yet you are going to bet yep. against him. Yeah, the only, only guy that I trust offensively as a receiver is, is Julian Edelman. And that, I, I just don't believe the way they took Michael Thomas out of the game, they're going to do the same thing with Edelman and say, Brady, you're going to have to go to somebody else. And everybody, this is a team game. Julian Edelman is a team player, but he's going to get frustrated if he's not getting the ball. Mm. This is super – he you will know be what? frustrated. G- G- let me ask you if you think about this. I would take Akeem Tlaib, and I would put him on. I'll put him on Chris Hogan, and I would roll coverage to Edelman and Gronk. I, I would do that as well. Hmm. You, you have. I don't. I don't know if I would put him on Hogan if, because I feel like that's a waste. How many targets? <laughs> I don't believe they're going to throw the ball more than five times to Chris Hogan. Shannon, so, what, what are you talking about, Chris Hogan? It, it, I think Akeem that, Tlaib? He'd be bored. <laughs> What, what yeah. would he do? It, it will be because because that way I can take my coverage and I can I can neutralize him. You're not going to throw him any targets. Now I can take these two men. I can double Gronk. I can double Edelman. Yeah, but Talib will be eating popcorn on the yeah. field, right? That's okay. Yeah. You you can you can do that, but you're going to have to mix it up because when you start moving Talib around, you're pretty much telling Tom Brady and McDaniel's what type of coverage you're in, and so now it starts to get too easy for Brady. Okay, this is what they've done. The Previous times he's done this, okay, I'm expecting this now. So you're going to have to mix it up, mainly man-to-man. That's what Wade Phillips plays. Um, and you just got to hope that the DBs can slow the receivers down at the line of scrimmage and that defensive yes. line can just get Tom Brady a little antsy. So I got a question for both of you. Tom okay. Brady has played in eight Super Bowls. Has he played a bad one? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, the first one wasn't great. Yeah, but in the but he was young. Hey, but I, but hey, yeah, no, he the, he the played last well. Drive the field goal drive. Go back and look at what he did. Go look at the passes he completed yeah. to set up the forty-nine yard field goal. Well, here's the thing, Skip. The first three and a half quarters of the of the Atlanta game, he was horrible. And then Atlanta he played gave well. him the game. Oh, gave him the game. I'm we so, let's be. I was just watching some third and one in Atlanta. Th- throws the ball third okay. and one. They throw the ball. Fumble. Yes. Matt Ryan fumbles the ball to Patriots. I mean, it was. In, in the fourth quarter and overtime against Atlanta, Tom Brady threw for 246 yards. That's, that's a game. That, that's like a pretty good game for most quarterbacks. 
two forty six and two touchdowns. Tom Brady can have a good game. Right. He, he can throw for three hundred and fifty yards. You just can't allow them to run for over one hundred and twenty. You can't let them run for one hundred and fifty. Mm. Ju- that's that's the key. He mm. can he can throw the ball. You just can't give them both. Mm. I keep saying this will be Tom Brady's greatest Super Bowl challenge, and when he wins, which he will, it will be his greatest achievement because Wade Phillips has been his kryptonite. They got the best D-line. They got two of the best cover corners, and as Brady said, two of the best interceptors in Super Bowl history. And all of a sudden, the, the, what, what on paper, the Rams are clearly the better team, and that's what you're going with, right? I'm going with those guys up front. I mean, things can come full circle. Super Bowl 36, that was the Bill Belichick's and Tom Brady's first Super Bowl against the Rams. Would would this be their last Super Bowl win against the Rams, or will it be their last Super Bowl loss against the Rams? So I see it being a loss. Um, That defensive line, they got to show up. They got to show up. Hmm. That pressure, pressure only works if your back end can hold up and give you an extra tick to get there. Hmm. Because if you let Brady throw the ball to his first option, which is normally Edelman, or swinging the ball out of the back uh, to a running back, you got no chance. Hmm. You got to make him clutch it. So, in the two playoff games, Tom Brady has gotten rid of the ball in an average of 2.1 seconds, and he just flat out wore out the pass rushes of the Chargers and the Chiefs where they got to the fourth quarter and they were just gassed because you know how hard it is to try to get to the quarterback with all your might, and then you fall short and you fall short and you get there late and you get there late, and finally by the fourth quarter, you're just out of it. And Joey Bosa said in the fourth quarter to Tom Brady, quit throwing it so fast. But what did, what did, what did Shannon just say? If you go back to the Chargers and the Chiefs, those that secondary, the back end, they're playing off coverage. Mm-hmm. You got to get up and press the Patriots. That messes up the timing. Now the ball's not mm-hmm. coming out on time. You got to pat the ball and say, okay, let, let's see how this release is. Mm-hmm. Oh, he didn't get a clean release. Now I got to go to this read. The Chargers and the Chiefs, they just played off coverage, free mm-hmm. release. You, you got to get up and press those guys and mess that timing up. Throw it mm-hmm. off. So by your strategy, it sounds like Brady's going to have his worst ever Super Bowl game because he's going to have no run game and no open receivers. So I mean, th- those guys. No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. Receiver, we're man. saying you must take the run game away. Okay. I skip. I told you in, in the opening segment that Tom Brady's probably going to have four, four fifty plus. You can live with that, but what you can't live with is Tom Brady having three hundred and one hundred and fifty to two hundred yards rushing. Hmm. You can't lose both. You got, you have to take something I'll away. I'll tell you what I can't live with is Bill Belichick giving up another 41 points in a Super Bowl. That's what I can't live with. Because, think, Skip, think about this. The most passing yards in a postseason game in history, the team lost in which the quarterback threw for 500 in a playoff game. Mm-hmm. And that was Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Yep. And even though they ran the ball, Skip, they, they were behind. They didn't get enough touches. They still was over 100 yards. Yeah, but there's a big asterisk on that game because the best It ain't no asterisk on no game. Yeah, they're the best cornerback for the New England Patriots. Man, was you better stop it. You hear that, TJ? He didn't play a snap. I used to Malcolm Butler didn't play. Uh, that that baffled me as well, but the Thank way you. he played this year, you make make Belichick look like a genius. I thought he uh, played pretty well down the stretch this year. That's just Yeah, the last four, the last month of the season. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. TJ, it has been great to have you. Thank you for joining <laughs> us today. Guys, is Jason Garrett on his way out in Dallas? I need to hear what's the best to say about this. And Shannon, too, next. No mercy. And reports that Jerry Jones is not expected to extend Jason Garrett's contract short-term or long-term. The Cowboys made the playoffs this season, but Garrett only has two playoff wins for Dallas since becoming head coach in 2010. Jones was asked about the possibility of an extension earlier this week and said they've had a pretty good record the last few years, but it's, quote, not enough. The Cowboys did make a change on the offensive side of the ball yesterday, promoting Kellen Moore from quarterbacks coach to offensive coordinator. So, Shannon, what does this tell you? Tells me that Jerry Jones believed that Jason Garrett is not a very good coach. But, Skip, wasn't it two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that Jerry Jones said that if Jason Garrett was a free agent, he'd be in very high demand. Now, wouldn't you want to tie up a coach in very high demand for an extended period of time? Touche. Exactly. Good point. <laughs> you know that. exactly what I'm talking about, Skip. Yep. The thing, the problem that, <clears throat> excuse me, the problem that Jerry Jones has is he wants all the credit and none of the blame for when they're losing. It's hard for me to believe that Jason Garrett has any say in the final 53. He has any say in free agency. He has any say in the draft. His thing is coach the team. Well, 
when he coaches the team, Jerry Jones second guesses everything that he does. Well, I just thought in that situation we should have gone for it on fourth down. And then what did you have? Every fourth down situation that came up, Jason Garrett started going for it. Mm. When that's not in his resume, that's Sean McVay, that's Sean Payton, uh, Ron Rivera. Those are the guys that gamble normally on fourth down. Not Jason Garrett. Also, and it's true, Zeke and Dak are coming to an end on their rookie contracts, and they've got one playoff win to show for it. Jerry Jones says, with the talent that I've assembled, we should be better. He said, when they beat the Saints, we're super with different cats. Yep. And lo and behold, they're the same cat. Pole cats. Hmm. Long story short, they're skunks. They stink. And I told you, Skip Bayless, and Jerry Jones, you're finally going to get your wish, Skip. <clears throat> because I don't, I believe if Jason Garrett does not get this team to an NFC Championship game or the Super Bowl, he's going to be out as your head coach. I'm sorry, I'm still fixated on polecats, stink, <laughs> skunks. Yep. You went all the well, way that's to what, skunks. That, it, hold on, in the South, that's what they call a skunk, a polecat. I, I, I realize that. But <laughs> <laughs> your cowboys stink. So I, I, I just can't, I, I can't let this lay. <laughs> So my skunks, my Dallas skunks, really? okay. I don't know how they did this, but they actually went 10 and 6 and won the NFC East and won me six cases of Diet Mountain Dew. And wait, 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 it's my turn now. You already talked. <laughs> and beat your guy, walk it to him, Wentz, not once, <coughs> but twice. And yes. then beat Seattle in this thing called a playoff game, right? It's actually called a postseason uh-huh. game. And the skunks skunked. The Seahawks. I don't know how they did it. I don't know. It was an upset, I guess, right? One. One? Well, one's As in pretty good. Win. There, there are a whole bunch of teams that did not win one playoff game this year. Whole bunch. I don't know the math on that, but it's it's way, it's the vast majority did not win one playoff game this year. Just just one. Which Okay. Of those teams that didn't win playoff game, which one is the Dallas Cowboys? Which one is the most profitable, the most recognizable sport, mm-hmm. uh, uh, fr- sports franchise in all the world? Which one of those? Mm. Look, oh. I, I'm not the biggest Jerry fan when it comes to running the football team. He's the greatest okay. promoter in the history of promotion. <laughs> He's the greatest salesman. He's the greatest marketer. He's got the most valuable team in the world. The world mm-hmm. he has. Mm-hmm. It's not America's team. It's the world's team. But I must remind you that Jerry Jones, the meddler, actually meddled the Cowboys in 2014 all the way to 12-4 and and what should have been two playoff wins because Dez caught it. You know it and I know it. But that would have been NFC Championship game at Seattle where they'd already won in the regular season. So So that was an egregious call? Are you saying that was a blown call? Well, yeah, that was a blown call because that went to replay, right? That one actually oh. went, that was a non-call. Oh. That went to replay. And they blew the replay. That's how what? bad that was because clearly they just didn't want Jerry Jones to advance. You know what you need to stop. What, what did the ref rule on the field? Whoosh, right? Touchdown. Yeah, he said it was a catch. Yeah, because he caught it. He made not one football move. He made three football moves. Then took the ball in his left hand because he's left-handed and tried to slam it on the goal line. And and what did he come, uh, he got on the intercom. After further review, yep. the receiver went to the ground, failed to maintain possession of the Thank football you. throughout the entirety of the act of catching the football. Yep. Therefore, the plan is ruled incomplete. He had caught it, and he had run with it, and he was trying to <laughs> slam it home for a touchdown. And the reason he didn't control it to the ground is because he didn't mean to control it. He meant to do what running backs get to do at the goal line, slam it on the goal line for a touchdown. No. Break the plane. And it just broke my heart. But who cares about that? Onward and upward. So then Jerry Jones meddled his way in 2016 to a 13 and 3 record and a near playoff win. I don't know, it was Mason Crossbar mm-mm, mm-mm. making two intercontinental do field goals. I don't know. How, and neither one of them had any chance of going in, and they both. I'm near my hometown right now, Skip. Yeah. I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it, but yeah. I'm near there. Yeah. Sorry about that. But then <laughs> this year, Jerry Jones meddled his way to a 10-6 and six record and a playoff win. So Jerry's done some right things, and he actually did one right thing back in 2013 because he did this same thing to Jason Garrett, who was nearing the end of his deal, and he just said, I'm going to make you play for a contract next year, which is 2014. They went 12-4, and four, and he gave him three years. 
Did I skip, love it? But no. You, skip, think about what you just said. The whole while, you didn't mention Jason Garrett. You, all you said was Jerry Jones, which is the problem. And as Jenny read in the read-in, since 2010, they have two playoff wins. Mm. Two. Well, Jerry has two oh, playoff wins. Yeah, pretty good. So, oh, so, oh, so well, you'd rather really? Pretty good. Yeah. Is that skunk? Does that qualify as skunks? Skunk? Oh, please. For a team that's worth over five, oh, for a team that's worth over five yeah. billion, yeah. Yeah. for Harsh. the most recognizable, yeah. the most profitable sports franchise in all the world, this is deemed unacceptable. This is what they call absolute failure. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what the bottom line to this discussion is. There's one man who can change life in Dallas, and he just got elevated to offensive coordinator. And if he gets elevated to play caller. You are in big trouble next year because Who? Kellen Moore is the next oh, Sean McVay. Book it. Book it. Remember I said this. Kellen Moore is the next Sean McVay. But he has to be given the authority and the autonomy to call his plays, to make his own game plan. Jason can have some input. They got John Kitten and now as the quarterback. He can have some input. But Kellen Moore has offensive brilliance about him, is, which is why Dak all this week at the Super Bowl was raving about his connection was he, to Kellen yeah, Moore. What's he supposed to say? No, well, he could just be half-hearted about it and say, well, No, see you know, they, no, they don't do that. He loves him. Trust me on this. I know from the inside, he loves Kellen Moore. And Kellen Moore was a coach's son growing up. I, his, his father was his high school yep. coach. And at age five, he's drawing up plays. He's got that little genius thing going. I know, and I saw him run those same plays he drew up at five in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, you watched them too. It, nobody was even playing. They weren't even a football game. I don't even know what yeah, it was. was. Well, it, nobody wants to it tackle it. He still. It took fourth quarter, three minutes left in the ball game, yeah. before, on fourth down for the NFC. Plays being called by Please. Kellen Moore. Please. Team being Stop head coached it. by Jason yeah. Garrett yeah. to get the ball in the yeah. end zone. You ought well, to be ashamed of yourself. I am not ashamed of myself, but I'm ashamed of Jason Garrett that he's still afloat as the head coach. What? And once upon a time, he called the plays for this team, so he's going to try to reinsert himself, I'm sure, with Mr. Jones and try to become the play caller again, and it cannot happen. Jason Garrett is no more than a head cheerleader. That's all. He is the smiling figurehead of the franchise. That's all he is. He's the figurehead head coach. And as long as he just keeps smiling and clapping, because he's Coach Clap, stay out of the way and let Kellen Moore call the plays. Why have the Rams risen this year? Because Jared Goff, who's not a great quarterback, but he can be pretty good, it's because he believes so strongly in what Sean McVay tells him in his ear. And so will Dak. If you let Kellen speak in his ear and tell him with conviction, this is what we're going to run and this will work because it's how you hear it in your ear. It's how much you believe in the play call. I don't think half the time Dak really believed in what Scott Linehan was saying in his ear. But in this case, he loves Kellen more and he's going to trust what he hears. Okay, you don't mind me asking. How much say do you think Sean McVay has on the final 53-man roster? I don't know. Honestly, Les needs obviously, in control of that. I'm sure there's input. I, I believe he has say. I believe he has final say yeah. on the final 53. Yeah. I what about Les Sean Snead Payton? did a lot of good things, though. I think he's yes, the master. Yes, I, I got no problem with that. Out. But Les Need does a lot of good things, and then he gets the hell out of the way. Yeah. He doesn't constantly I, I try that. to insert himself yeah. like Jerry Jones does. Okay. Because here's the thing, Skip. If Jerry Jones believes that Jason Garrett has underachieved, underperformed, what other business will Jerry Jones believe the, the, uh, the guy that's in charge has underperformed still would have his job now? He wouldn't. Well, at least exactly. Jerry said the other day, yesterday, he said, I'm not going to extend him. At least that's a start. So he's, again, coaching for his job next year. But the key is, is Jerry going to let him call plays again? Kellen Moore will change life in Dallas, Texas, because Amari has already started to change life. And if you give Dak and Amari an offseason and a training camp with Kellen Moore overseeing, great things will happen. Not good things, but great things. And you are going to be eating lots of Monday crow. You're going to be losing. No, nah, walking to him. Oh, walking to him will be back by then. We'll yeah. be straight. Yeah. Who will be, what would mm -hmm. you say? Who will be back? Walking to him. 
Oh, oh walk Now walk it out. I forgot all about shit. him. So did I. Wait, you ain't forget about him. Wait, is is he going to be healthy next year? He's got. He'll wait, be it's just a knee, fine. It's a back. It's, fine. It's, it's, it's shoulder. It's you just you just worry about those underperforming, underachieving yeah. cowboys. Yeah. All right, Shannon, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you off. Oh. We got to get on to something <laughs> important here. Last yeah. week, Skip had a little Twitter beef with Jet Safety Jamal Adams. Jamal is actually going to join us next for mm -hmm. his response. What is he going to say to Skip? Leave Hello, people Jamal. alone, Skip. Yep. <laughs> no mercy. All right, let's go back to nine days ago when Jet Safety Jamal Adams drilled the Patriots mascot at the Pro Bowl. There were some reports that the mascot had to go to the hospital after that hit, and Skip was one person that was not a fan of it. Skip and Jamal had a little back and forth on Twitter. Here's how it started. Skip tweeted, just watch the video of Jamal Adams getting a running start and knocking down the Patriots mascot, then celebrating with Pro Bowl teammates. Hey, if you can't beat or knock down real Patriot players, I guess you have to take it out on their mascot. Enjoy the Super Bowl, Jamal. Then Jamal responded by tweeting this, Skip. Please make up your damn mind. Are you a Pats fan or a Cowboys fan? Stop acting like Drake switching sides every week. And we are joined in Atlanta by Jamal Adams. Welcome to Undisputed. All right, Jamal, the floor is yours. What is your response? Hey, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? How are you, Jamal? We're good, bro. Thanks for coming on with us this morning. <laughs> I'm good. No problem, man. I'm ready. I'm ready to, you know, talk with my guy Skip, man. Okay, what do you I'm, I'm to excited say? for this one. Jamal, what's up, Skip? <laughs> How are you, Jamal? So, if if you want, I'll start. I, I, I'm, yeah. Look. Yeah, yeah. Start it off, man. Okay. Please, Here's, please start it off. Here was my point. You are obviously a very good football player. You you might just turn into an all-time great football player because you have that potential. So, what would possess you? to get a running start and knock down the poor mascot of the Patriots and send him to the hospital. You hurt the poor man, and it's so beneath the dignity of a potentially great football player to do that to a mascot when you should save it for, I don't know, run over Sony Michelle or Rex Burkhead or maybe even Julian Edelman next year when it really counts because that wasn't funny or clever or cool. That was just weak on your part because you are better than that, Jamal Adams. Your response, please. Is it, is it my turn yet? Yes, no. <laughs> your turn. Okay. So so do you like to have fun, man? You yes, seem I so do. up and tight all the time. Yeah, you gotta pick and choose. I, I, what's I really fun. can't. I, I don't know, man. I don't think you have fun a lot, man. Okay. He well, does uh, you know, Jamal, he does honestly, not have fun. <laughs> I know it. I know it doesn't, Shannon. You know I have a lot of I have a lot of respect and love for you, brother. If it wasn't for you, man, I think the show would be nonsense. If it was, if it was just Skip Show. Mm. Okay. Uh, but my comments, my comments, you know, to to you know respond back to what you said, man. Um, at the end of the day, you know he was out there um, taunting the fans. All of the fans at the Skills Challenge was booing him. You know, while he was running, just taunting them. And, you know, I said, hey, let me let me put a stop to this. And, uh, you know, it was all funny games at the end of the day. Um, you know, the first thing I did, um, I made sure, you know, a guy on the, you know, that works with the NFL um, went up to the mascot and made sure it wasn't a young lady because I didn't want that to happen. So it was kind of planned. Um, while you got a little serious, um, you know, you like to say a lot of negative things about a lot of people, a lot of players, but 90% of the time you're wrong. Uh, let's get that's, that. Let's get that. That's you know, 100% straight. wrong on your part. But go ahead. Uh, you, you know, I, you know, that's your opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it was out. I was out there having fun, man. Everybody enjoyed it. Um, you know, obviously, I caught a lot of heat with the Patriots fans and really just you. Um, so, you know, other than that, I'm good with my odds. Um, you know, what you didn't see is when I tackled him. He got up and, you know, he chased me down and tackled me as well. Uh, but you don't want to talk about that one, man. You want to keep the negative light on me. Mm. Well, I, I read, I think you even tweeted he had to go to the hospital, so I don't know what shape he was in to chase and knock you down, right? But how do you know he went to the hospital? There's a lot of people that said he went to the hospital. There's a lot of people that said he didn't. Okay, so, well, I don't know for sure. I read I, maybe, it. Didn't, maybe, didn't you tweet it? Didn't you? I, I thought I read that in your tweet. No, I didn't, I didn't tweet it. I didn't, I didn't tweet it, man. I don't know if he went to the hospital. Obviously, that's, that wasn't the goal to put him in the hospital. Um, maybe he got hurt while he was chasing me and uh, tackled me. That's, that's maybe where he got the sore jaw and the sore back. Hmm. 
Well, I must say, mm. it was the best hit I saw delivered at the whole Pro Bowl, including the football game, because <laughs> nobody really hit each other at the football game. But congratulations to you for being the defensive MVP. I appreciate that, man. That, that was something positive that I, that I always remember from you. Um, hopefully, you know, you continue, you know, to, to stay positive about, you know, myself. Okay. Well, I'll, might- I'm, I'm open for business, but next year maybe you need to go about beating the Patriots on the field. That would be man. Your, leave people alone. You know, that's, I'm yeah, just that's, saying yeah. that's the next order. That's, of that's definitely here, the plan. Right? But yeah, that's definitely the plan, man. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure, um, you know, you understood. If you was in, the, if you was in the uniform, I definitely would have hit you a little bit harder. Okay. So you know, anytime <laughs> you you want you want to do that, we can we can get. We, there's a lot All of right. space and opportunity out there. You know, you and I can go. You know, okay, we'll toe do to that. toe. Let's do that. And you know what we'll do after uh, that. I, I, We'll, we'll then, set it up. Then, then we'll, we'll set it up on, in Vegas. We'll put on our tank chops and our shorts, and we'll go run after that. And we'll go as far as you want to run, 8 miles, 10 miles, for, for Let's one do of it. your weekly checks. We'll bet that. How about that? You want to do that? Oka- we'll do it Let's tomorrow. do it. Oklahoma's real. Yeah. You and I. Yeah. Tomorrow, we can okay. do it right now. But I'm ready. That, hey, go Jamal, Jamal, before we get it. too far, you've been, you've been very open about what you guys need offensively. You said you want Antonio Brown. You like to have right. Le'Veon Bell. Is that wishful thinking, or are you trying to plant a seed into the Jets' front office? Go get these guys. Honestly, you know, Shannon, I'm just trying to get as you know as, as many guys as possible to come help us. You know, win this thing, man. Obviously, that's the plan. Um, you know, I always say it. I'm like LeBron. I want to play with everybody. I want to play with all the great players. And you know, anything we can do to you know make the team you know better. That's what I'm about, man. I'm all about winning and all about trying to change the culture around, you know, the Jets Nation. I believe, you know, we deserve it. The fans deserve it. And, you know, we got to change this thing around quickly. If Adam Gaze were to call you, I don't know if you talked to Adam Gaze, your new head coach. If he were to call you into his office and ask you, Jamal, what do you think we need in order to get us over the hump to make us a serious, a playoff contending team? Honestly, man, again, man, you know, Shana, we just got to get we got to get more players, man. Uh, simple fact. Um, obviously, we have talent in the locker room, um, but at the same time, man, we still need more talent to make it to these to these big games, um, you know, and to win those big games. You got to you got to have uh, the total package. Um, you know, we're not too far off, obviously. Um, you know, we just got to put, a, a, you know, all the puzzle pieces together. And I think the sky's the limit, man, once we do that. So let's get to what's happening this Sunday, Jamal. You are betting on which team or which way are you going in this game? Are you going to go with the Patriots in your division to be loyal to your division, or are you going to go with the Rams? Honestly, man, I I just want to see a great football game. Um, At the end of the day, I don't really know who I'm going with. Um, Obviously, it's two outstanding programs that's, you know, about to go head-to-head, and they're the best of the best, so I wish them well. You played against the Patriots. If Sean McVay were to call you in his office, Oh, Wade, let's take Wade Phillips because you play defense. Let's say Wade Phillips called you and said, Jamal, you played this team twice. You've had some, some success. How would you go about defensing Tom Brady in this offense? Well, the first thing you have to do, man, is disguise. Um, obviously, he's, he's seen everything. Um, he's been in the game for a long time. He's the GOAT. Um, so you got to disguise in the back end. you got to disguise, you know, the front, the linebackers. Um, you know, it's got to be, you know, a, a, a team effort, man. I'll put it like that in. The main thing is slowing down Grunk. Uh, Grunk, you know, has a lot of confidence going into this game. He had a hell of a game last uh, game versus, you know, uh, the Chiefs. Chiefs. And um, I think that, you know, right now he's hot. He's hot right now, man. So you got to slow him down. You got to take away Edelman, and, and you definitely got to slow that, that run game down. All right. Jamal, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy this weekend. And coming up, guys, we've got the Rambassador, Eric Dickerson. He's here. He's going to break down the Super Bowl. Jamal, thanks again. Jamal, I can't let you hit Skip. You might break him. I, I can't let you hit Skip, Jamal. Hey, 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 yeah, hey, Shannon. Hey, anytime yeah. you want, you want to sip some hen dog, man. We can do that, man. Let's go sip that hen dog on the beach or something, man. Mm. All right, now what I'm talking about, Skip? See, oh, always get invited really? to the cookout. I, I want no part of that. Yeah, either way. All right, you guys hey, enjoy yeah, that. Yeah, bring, bring, bring Skip, bring Skip along, man. We'll take a couple shots, man, and then we can go one on one. And then we'll figure things. I'm out. ready. Settle we'll it there. Be time. <laughs> Jamal, thank you. I will make sure that happens someday. Guys, the Rambaster is here next. Undisputed will be right back. No mercy. Well, we are.
are joined live in Atlanta by the Rambassador, Eric Dickerson. Yeah. Good to have you with us. Hey. Gosh, I can hear what you say. I said good to have you with us, oh. Eric. Thank, thank you. I'd be glad to be here. What's going on, Skip? All right. There's a lot to get to. All right, Eric. <laughs> I, I got to ask. Do you have mini ED with you there? I can't see him. <laughs> you know, I, he didn't make it. He, he had to stay back in L.A. to get all the Ram fans all psyched up. Okay. He, he left New Orleans a couple of days ago. I, so so he, he, he part of New Orleans for about two weeks, but he's back in L.A. now. I had a feeling you maybe <laughs> sent him to join us on the set, but either way, I'm sure if you guys are successful Sunday, he will be here. So let's get to it. How confident are you in your Rams this Sunday? I'm very confident in the Rams. I mean, I, I've been looking forward to this for 17 years. This rematch really is what it is from 17 years ago. And we know how good the Patriots are. We know how good Tom Brady is, Bill Belichick. But I think people have underestimated the Rams pretty much all year from the from the beginning of the season. I mean, I think at one point we were 9-1, and one and, and a lot of people, Skip, you included, said that, you know, this team has a lot of flash. And, you know, I don't think they're a solid football team. They're a good football team, but not a great football team. And I kept saying that, you know, we were a really great football team. And, you know, time has shown uh, that we're where I thought we'd be all along. Uh, and how do I, how confident I, am I? I'm just as confident I was two weeks ago when I felt we beat the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. And I feel just as confident about this game. I think that we're, the Los Angeles Rams will win this football game. Hmm. So does that mean that the Rams are going to steal this game <laughs> on a late-blown call? Is that how confident you are? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't ever start that stuff, Skip. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, they had a chance to win that game. That game went overtime. Hey, look, it's no guarantees that they'd have got the ball back. Let's say they got the ball back. It's no guarantees they'd have scored a touchdown. It's like when Seattle, I mean, when Seattle played the Patriots in the Super Bowl, you'd have, everybody would have bet their life. They're going to score us over. You never. That's just football. You never know what's going to happen on, on the next play. Mm. So give us a score mm. so I have something mm. to shoot at. You think what what Rams by three <laughs> touchdowns? What what do you uh, nah, you know I, I you know I, I think the Rams will win by seven. That's what I'm thinking. You know, I hope it's more me personally, but I I, th I think they'll win by seven. Well that doesn't show a lot of confidence in your pick, right? Seven? Hey, Skip, a win is a win. We, hey, look, what does it say? You know, no confidence in the pick. Or it's a win. It's, it's a win is a win. You know how it works in but, football. But you just said you were extremely I, confident. I, that would be three touchdown confident. Hey, you're not gonna bait me he to that. Skip. To Come on now, you know, you know that. I, I, I know. Trying I see to get trying a to get a sucker bait. Just, you know, I, I tell you, he tries to sit on the fence. He's like, "Whoa, I'm, I'm not sure." Uh, so, so he can have both. So I can. I call you. I call you. You, you the junior. You the junior Don King of football. Really? So how <laughs> yes. how is it that I just keep every week winning? Diet do case after case after case from my man Shannon Sharp, another Hall of Famer. I'm not sitting on the Because I'll be getting sucker bets. Oh, sucker bets. Really? Okay. Well, he didn't, we, go ahead, Shane. I think, the, I think the Rams, in order for – it has to start defensively. You have to shut off the Patriots' running game because the Chargers and the Kansas City failed to do that, and it kept the Chiefs in third and short, third and one to three. And you know when it's third and one to three, three ED, you don't know if it's run or pass, and so pass, and it's really hard to stop that. Are you confident that the Rams can stop the run and put enough pressure on Tom Brady to get him off his spot? I am confident, man. You're right about that, that Shannon. One thing, when you give the Patriots a uh, third and one, you know, second and second and three, second and two, you know, that, that that's that's a plus for them. And and the defense has played very well in, in these in this playoff run so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, they played very well in New Orleans on defense. They played well against the your Cowboys, Skip. You know, shutting Zeke down. I think the 41 yards. I know you hate to hear that. But, uh, yes, I mean, this, and this is the time to play well. This, this is that time. I mean, and one thing about our, our offense can score. I mean, we can keep up with any, yes. any football team. And I gotta, you gotta give, you have to give them credit. In New Orleans, a place that's it's hard to play. It's extremely hard to hear. You have to pretty much go with hand signals and, and, and quick counts, uh, down there. And they still were able to win that football game. They won't have that host, that hostile crowd to deal with, uh, here in Atlanta. So before I get to my opinion of your opinion, Mr. Dickerson, I've got to ask you about your running backs. Is Todd Gurley healthy or is it just is it about C.J. Anderson just being hotter than Todd at this point in the, the playoffs? 
I, I think Todd is healthy. You know, at, at this point in the season, Shannon, you know this as well. You know, you're never 100. percent If you're 80, percent right. that's like man, almost 100, percent even 70. percent So I think I, I, I believe that he'll be ready to play. You know, in that game in New Orleans, he didn't play well. I mean, that's that's football. But luckily, you know, we're fortunate to have another back in C.J. Anderson. That if the if the main guy isn't playing well, and our main guy is Todd Gurley, you have someone else to go to. And we didn't run the football extremely well in that football game, no matter what. You know, I got to say, in that football game, Jared Goff won that football game offensively. You know, his throws, his running the football, uh, his bootleg, just getting away from from the rush. You know, that was why we were able to win that football game. But I think in this game here, we will have to be able to run the football. We can run the football against the Patriots. And I know that Todd, I'm, I'm hoping that Todd Gurley will have one of these games, an MVP game, so everybody can put this to rest. Is Todd Gurley healthy? Is he ready? So I'm saying he's ready. Mm. And I think C.J. Anderson could have mm. an MVP game. Seems like he's just. Hey, who, we don't care. Who, we don't care who has. As long as we win, we don't care who has. <laughs> so I'm going to boil this down for you guys, as I always do. And you just mentioned Jared Goff made some big time throws at New Orleans to help win that game. And yet, this game for me boils down to the Rams have Jared Goff and the Patriots have Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. It's as simple as that. And you've got Wade Phillips. And he can be a chess master against Tom Brady. But while your offense is going to play Madden, Brady's just going to keep playing slow but sure chess. He will figure ways to pick your defense apart. What, whatever you take away, he will find an opening over here, or over there, because you have to give him something. And nobody in the history of football has found that something more slowly but surely than Tom Brady will. He's played eight Super Bowls and never played a bad one. He's been in every game. He's won five of them with five game-winning drives in the fourth quarter of overtime. And history is screaming at you right now. He's going to pull it off again this time. I think it's going to be 37 to 35 Brady over Sean Pay- I mean over Sean McVay because in the end, I just think Belichick's defense is torchable. You're going to have your way. You're going to score your points but Brady will score more. I think he's been on a season-long, almost a vendetta to get even with what Belichick did to him in last year's Super Bowl, which is bench Malcolm Butler for the whole game. Your best corner, the guy who would played the most snaps all year, he played no snaps in the Super Bowl, and Brady's back to right the wrong, and I believe he's going to right it against your Rams. Have you heard a guy named Nick Foles? Yeah. You ever heard his name before? Yeah, the back. Uh, didn't he play? Didn't he play against Tom Brady? Didn't he play against Tom Brady last year? Yeah, he played against Bill Belichick. Did, did you, did you, last did, you year. Did, 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 did you make the same argument last year about Nick Foles versus Tom Brady? I'm just saying. I mean, I'm, I'm somebody help me out here. Did, Shannon, did, didn't, he, didn't he say that? Wait, Shannon died last yep. year. Wait, didn't he say that? Ambassador. Yeah, it, did, didn't he say that? Was it, you, <laughs> was it you who predicted that Nick Foles would throw 41 points up on Belichick's defense? Because I don't think anybody predicted that. Because. Remember, but I, you know, you know what I did. I did predict that the Eagles would win that football. I said the Eagles would win this football game, and I didn't need the points. They will win. I said that most definitely. Go back and look at the tape. One thing you have to do with Tom Brady, any quarterback, I think any defensive player, an offensive player knows this. If you hit a quarterback and get in his face, no one likes that, and Tom Brady included. I think for sure. The Rams will get pressure on Tom Brady, frustrate him. Of course, he's going to get his throws. He's going to be Tom Brady. There's no doubt about that. But do I believe that we're the better football team? Do I think we have a a great game plan for Tom Brady? Yes, I do. You can't take anything from Tom Brady or Bill Belichick. Mm. Go ahead, Shannon. They're the the, the champ. They're the champ for a reason. There's a reason why they've been four to five of these things in the last five five years. They're well-coached. They're disciplined. They don't beat themselves. And somehow they find a way to convince the opposing team they need to be perfect. And sometimes they take unnecessary risk that puts them in harm's way. I just believe if you I, and, and, it, and I know it's sacrilegious to say this because Tom Brady is, is a GOAT quarterback. He's a transcendent player. But you've got to put the ball in his hands because if you let them have a two pronged attack where they're able to throw it and Tom Brady is able to pass it, you have no chance of beating them. <clears throat> I so do. That, I, agree. I, 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 I agree with that. Shannon, what have I told you from the start? Yes. There's one man in sports you do not bet against. And it's I'm betting against him. You are. You bet two cases of Diet Mountain Dew. And yes. You're going to lose two more. You're, you're already, nope. We've cleared the decks and we started over, and you're already down two cases just in these playoffs. And now you're going to be zero, down zero. four cases because you won't learn your lesson. 
This is <laughs> Michael Jordan in sheep's clothing. This is a, a cold-blooded assassin disguised as the nerdy, corny dad down the street. That's who he comes across as after the game. He's aw shucks, gee whiz, and he is an assassin, psycho Tom on the football field. <laughs> you're going to see it once more, and you're going to have to come in here on Monday and say, yeah, I should have learned my lesson, but you won't. You just can't nope. give in to him. You lost I'm going to come in here very, very happy. Yeah. I'm going to be on a bender. Are you really? Cause, yeah, because I'm going to be celebrating. Me and ED going to be celebrating in the eight. Mm. Oh, boy. Uh, yes, really? yeah, 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 yes, we are. Yes, we are. Matter of fact, you know what, Skip? I, I just got a text from I just got a text from, from Lil E. He watching you right now. He said he wants some of that Mountain Dew too. He said he said he wants four cases of Mountain Dew. Really? I'm trying to get him off the phone right now, so he said he wants some of that best. So he, want, he wants four cases of Mountain Dew, Skip. We're talking about mini ED. <laughs> little, little mini ED. He keep texting me over and over. I'm like, he said, tell Skip. He said, I'll take some of that. You know what? You, you, He's you watching, should... yeah. I got my phone. He said, I said, stop, 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 stop texting. I'm on air. You know what? He should star in so a you horror want movie this offseason because he's like a horror character. He's like the bride of Chucky, right? That's mini ED. That's a he got, he, he got that. He got that, he got that stare down. Yeah, he does. Skip, you're going to be very disappointed on Monday. I'm no, sorry, Skip. No. Um, I, I have high confidence okay. in Tom Brady winning a close game. Because they're always close games. All eight of them have been close. They could have gone either way, right? You know what, Skip? How about you do this? Tell Ernestine to go watch the game at a girlfriend's house because you're going to be <laughs> slinging furniture and kicking stuff, and I don't want Ernestine around for any of that. Ernestine will not watch the game, period. She will go shopping. She'll go somewhere with her sister. They will be out and about. And she oh, will, she will so that's what you do. You getting her to see out of the house. Ain't no, she gonna be out and about. You getting out of the house. Yeah. You think you slick? No, you get out, out, right out of the house. She leaves because she wants no part of me during any football game. <laughs> so I have the house to myself. Hazel, our little Maltese, can is not invited. She cannot come in. She's in the other room. And I'm sorry, I go in. I, I go in on, between man? quarters and I say, are you okay, Hazel? And she says, are you okay? And I say, yeah, no. Okay. Gosh, I can't believe you. Yeah, on you yeah, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Oh. The two women that love you the most, you isolate them in the Super Bowl. Yep, okay. I do. Because this is it. All right. It's a big weekend for everyone involved. Eric, thank you for joining us. Good luck to your Good luck, Hey, Good luck, but, but thank you, thank you. Don't I got another text. Skip, my God. He goes, stop, stop, yeah. stop. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> thank you to Mini ED for watching as well. All right. Enjoy this weekend. Coming okay. up, are the Lakers about to take off with LeBron back? We'll discuss all that next. No mercy. LeBron made his return last night after missing the last 17 games. He scored 24 points and was an assist shy of a triple-double in the overtime win against the Clippers. The Lakers are currently a game out of a playoff spot, and after the game, LeBron said, quote, we're all ready to make this push. Tomorrow night, the Lakers will be on the road to face the Warriors, and if that wasn't enough, the LA Times reports the Lakers gave the Pelicans five different trade scenarios for Anthony Davis. They got options. So, Shannon, what is next for the Lakers? I expect them to go on a run. <clears throat> Their best player is back. He's rested and he's healthy. He's going to have to play his way back into, uh, you know, peak game conditioning. Mm -hmm. And eventually, as it progresses, he will trust that growing more and more, knowing that he's 100% healthy, and he'll be LeBron James all over again. Um, he will shoot the ball better um, than what he did last night. I'm looking at their schedule at Golden State, at Indiana, Boston, Philly, and Atlanta. I think they're going to be a worst-case scenario, 4-1. and one. Maybe 3-2 and two would be the worst, but I can see 4-1 and one in this scenario, Skip Bayless. They're about to make this move. LeBron James <clears throat> is getting ready to show the world why he's the best player in all of basketball because I think sometimes when you're away from the game, other guys are doing spectacular things. James Harden has been, the last month, he's been phenomenal. But you know and I know the baddest man that can dribble a basketball on this planet called Earth is Goat James. Hmm. I, I was thinking he's going to play against Goat James in Golden State on Saturday night, but that's just me. I don't know. I, I was don't do this, other guy. So you're predicting four and one on this road trip. leading. That'll up be a best-case scenario, worst-case oh. three and two. Well, well, wait a second. I can't, I can't keep up with yeah. you. You keep amending your predictions. Skip, you, look who we got. We got run. Golden State, Boston, and Philly. Okay, I'm trying to figure out who you're predicting they're going to lose to. I ain't telling you. Well, are they going <laughs> to beat Golden State? 
is Clay playing or is he not playing? Okay, let's say he doesn't. Let's just. We got him. You really? got him without Clay Thompson. Yep. That's it. Yep. That closes yep. the deal. Yep. Man, I, I'd put a case on that right Boy. now. No, we don't worry oh, about man, no case. Man. We got enough cases. Okay. I don't know. We gonna beat Indiana? I would hope so with no Victor Oladipo. I would hope, but you know what? And we gonna get. And we're going to get Boston. At, at Philly, you, you're you going to have a hard time at Philly because they are really good. That's my pick they are, to win the They're really, really good. Yep, and they had a big win last night, and Jimmy Butler didn't contribute much to that win because Ben Simmons and the big guy, whew, Joel Embiid. They, oh, they oh Joel Embiid is a monster. They took the game And you look, that's always been the, the recipe for beating Golden State. Punish them on the boards. Everybody doesn't have seven foot two Joel and B though. Yeah. That's skilled. Yeah, and Ben Simmons played big last night too. Oh, he was a monster. Here's what's gonna happen. How a guy is yep. skip the guy can't shoot outside of six feet. No. But I tell you what he can do, he can post up just about anybody. He can. He can switch off. If you play it outside, he can switch off on anybody. Very few point guards can do what he does. Yep. Plus he played with poise last night. I watched a lot of it. I was going back and forth with the Lakers, yeah. but he, he played like a man last night, and he's it's taken This him a is while. where they missed Clay Thompson, Skip. Yep. No, I know. Because guess who would have been having Ben Simmons? You can make the case. Yep. Yep. Here's what's But you happen. know the Lakers, I, I don't yep. worry about anything. Yep. I, I, I loved what I saw from Brandon Ingram last night. It seems like he was un, unbothered, undeterred, that, look, look, I might be here in a week. I might not be. But I'm just going to go ahead and play my game and let the chips fall where they may. The reason you're going to have a hard time going on a run, as you say, is that about four of these young upcoming potential stars for the Los Angeles Lakers are going to go on a run to New Orleans pretty soon. <laughs> and to so me, I, I'm, I'm betting this trade is going to happen before the deadline. Again, the LA Times has reported that on the table for the Pelicans is Lonzo and Kuzma and Brandon Ingram and Zubats and a first rounder. And I know New Orleans got its pride up and its back up right now. Can't force his way out of here. But I think Dell Demps will come to his senses, see the light by next Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern time. That would be on the evening they play at Boston. And he'll just say, I know this is the best deal I'm going to be able to salvage out of this. And it's not salvage because it's really good. It could well, here's the thing, though, Skip. The I'm going to have to rescind that. Now, if they make this trade and they go down against Boston, that means they're going to be without three players. That's what so I'm they're going to be shorthanded. But I don't see them. Hap I don't see that happening. But like watch. when Cleveland made that trade a couple years ago yeah. and they went to Atlanta and had like eight players <laughs> and end up winning the game anyway. The problem is that the drumbeat is going to grow louder and louder, I think, for this trade. And mm -hmm. the young Lakers are going to get more and more distracted and maybe disheartened by this prospect. Hmm. Not that they don't want to be Pelicans, but it's just going to discombobulate the basketball team on the road as they have to play hard games. Indiana's still a hard game even without Victor because they're still a good basketball team. So they are. Right. You know, they're all right. But but again, the point is, if if you start to get distracted by the impending trade, I don't know that they're going to be locked in for Golden State, Indiana, Philly, Boston. My recommendations. Do not watch any television and get off social media until next Friday. That is a good recommendation. I would agree with that. But you know these kids? I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> and I do think Just play gonna, Fortnite. Don't they like Fortnite still? Yeah. Well, well, you could do that. But the point is, if, if they struggle, they're going to be in a pretty deep hole coming out of the break. But I think they're going to come out of the break with LeBron and Anthony Davis. And Well, you got this... You got the yeah. schedule, the Lakers schedule right there in front of you. What do you think they're going to do come out the, coming off this road trip? You mean out of the off the road trip? Yeah. I don't What's have What's their that. record? I, I only did the They got at Golden State, at Indy, oh, at no, Boston, no, I know that. at Philly. Oh, what do yeah. I think now? Yeah, what's their record? Again, I I, I think the team's going to get distracted and I think they're going to have a hard time. I think they might just win the one at Indiana. That might be the only one they win. Man, you crazy. Well, until the deadline. Then they got Atlanta just after the deadline and before the, the all-star break. Yep, but you're right. We're about to go on a run here. Yeah. All right. Well, I just Might told be you. five and two. Yeah. Might be. What is it? I like it. Yeah. I like my chances. You know what? Atlanta's no pushover now either. They haven't Push over. Level. Cream yeah. puffs. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, given. So five and two. Wait, what? How did, how did you get seven games out of this? 
Because after the All-Star break, we got Houston right oh, after the break, oh, and then we got Houston the Pelicans. Houston going at home, but then on yep. the road against New Orleans and Memphis. So mm. I think yeah. only two home games in the entire month of February. Wait, they go but, to New Orleans? Yes. Now that yep. would be a to show. New Orleans. What, what if half the Lakers are Pelicans that night? That changes. Ooh, that would be interesting. That's an interesting one. I'd watch We'd be that. just fine. Yeah. The confidence yep. from this guy yeah. now that LeBron's huh. back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh goat, oh goat, James. We feel it from here, even though you're not even with us. We just yeah. sense it. I don't know where the celebration was this morning. We didn't even have it from. I yet. got a feeling the gold mask to be out on Monday, and not for who you think, Skip Bayless. Really? Yeah. Oh, in honor of Tom Brady? No. Huh? Mm -mm. Well, you conceded. Oh, goat, me. James gonna do something Saturday night. But two two Mondays ago, you conceded. You, you give it up. You give in. Tom Brady's the goat. Didn't you say that? Yeah. Okay. I might get me a Jerry Goff jersey. I'm going to try to find me a Jerry Goff jersey while I'm down here. Really? Well, good luck with that because yeah. I don't know what you're going to do with it because I have to burn <laughs> it. Mm. Well, I'm going to wear it on Monday. Really? Yep. Jared Super Bowl MVP, Jerry Goff. Don't get ahead of yourself, Interesting. Shannon. He, yeah. went <laughs> he went to Jerry. He went to Jerry. Well, I, I'm going I like to that. Mom. Well done. No mercy. By now, you've probably heard that Tom Brady is going for his sixth Super Bowl trophy, which would be an NFL record. Overall, Brady has played in eight Super Bowls and has a 5-3 and three record in the biggest game of the year. So, Shannon, you've picked Brady to lose on Sunday. So what happens to his legacy if he falls to 5-4 and four in Super Bowls? Nothing. <laughs> he still has more playoffs. He still has more Super Bowl wins than any other quarterback. Um, see, I'm not one of these guys. I just believe that if you get to the Super Bowl, that's a greater accomplishment. I would rather get to the Super Bowl, lose that game, as opposed to getting knocked out in the first or second round, and then I keep a perfect or an intact resume, <clears throat> Super Bowl resume. I don't really understand that how do you knock him for getting to nine and winning five? And says, well, but he lost four. And he's gotten to more than any other quarterback, and it's not even close. So for me, I don't really think so. If he, even if if he wins, oh man, Brady's great. How much greater can he be? And if he loses, now all of a sudden he's not great anymore. I, 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 for me, if he were to win, if he win or lose, Tom Brady's place in the pantheon of greats goes unchanged in my book. What unchanged? I know somebody who would find lots of ways to knock Tom Brady if, in fact, he fell to five and four in Super Bowls. Because to me, five and four sounds somehow a whole lot worse than six and three. Six and three sounds really good. Five and four, just one game above 500. Does, let me ask you a question. Know, I would hear would that, that change your perception year. of Tom Brady? Not mine, but it would yours. It would give you an no, opening to take shots. Mm -mm. I mean, it's not no. three and six in the finals like somebody else I know, but no. I don't know. That'll Tom Brady plays is what, what it is. Tom Brady is great. Skip, think about it. He's been to nine. Yeah. John Elway is next in line with five. Okay. He's, not, he's four Super Bowl appearances clear. Of the second closest. It. Nobody knows that better than I do. But the X factor here is, what if he played poorly this Sunday in Atlanta? And what if, for the first time ever, the Patriots, under Brady and Belichick, that the Patriots got blown out? Then, then all of a sudden you'd say, yeah, but the fourth loss was really bad. Right? Skip, he's do one bad game, isn't he? Every, oh, name so the one guy a bad that's game. never you know played what? bad hear such in, a, a, in a playoff if, if game. If the Patriots lose, we will hear such a different tone on Monday oh, yeah. on this show because we'll hear the whole flip side of everything you're saying right no, now. No, I'm, I'm going to say, Skip, I told you, they lost. Oh. You told me? That'd be but, the first time. But, br but Brady, but Skip, yeah. nine. Hmm. Let, let that sink in. Okay. Nine Super Bowl appearances. And he's four clear. Everyone. Okay, I got it. And even better, the L that he took last year got mitigated, even canceled in my book, by the fact that he threw for the all-time playoff record 505 yards with the asterisk attached to the L that Malcolm Butler, the best cornerback, didn't play a single snap in the Super Bowl for unknown, mysterious, suspicious reasons. So, again, that whole loss didn't seem nearly so bad. It didn't even feel like a loss to me because Tom was so great and the defense was so bad, giving up 41 points to the Eagles' backup quarterback, that it wasn't, it, it didn't feel like what could happen if he played poorly and they got blown out, right? Well, well the thing is, Skip, is look, 
People that would try to hold a loss against Tom Brady, those are the same people. You're never going to be able to sway, sway those guys because they look at it, yeah, but he lost to Eli Manning twice and he lost to Nick Foles? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that's their argument there. Like, <clears throat> how would we look at Larry Bird had he not lost those NBA finals to someone other than Magic? Okay. Or if Michael Jordan had lost to some, you know, some lesser tier guy? Okay. Will what, we hold that against him? What happened in the first loss to Eli? The Giants got after Tom Brady the way yes. the Rams hoped to. And they beat Correct. him up and knocked him around. They sacked him five times. And he just kept on keeping on until he threw for 91 yards in the fourth quarter of that game. Again, he was only able to score 14. But the final touchdown came on a 12-play, 75-yard drive. And with two minutes left in the game, he hit Randy Moss from six yards out for a touchdown that put them ahead 14 to 10. Well, that's pretty good. And then it took the luckiest play in the history of the Super Bowl to cancel out what would have been a game-winning drive for Tom Brady. So you can't say that was a bad game by Tom Brady, right? No. Okay? No. And then... But, but the thing is, is that, Skip, they look at it, and they look at what he had done in the regular season. Okay. He was scoring 37 I points. I got it. But he was in position... Two minutes to go to win yet another Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Then in the second Eli lost Super Bowl, again, Tom Brady is up 17 to 15 with 406 left, and it's second and eleven from the New York Giant 44. And he made his one bad throw. He did throw the interception to Reggie Ragland the other day, but this was a pressure bad throw. This was an unclutched throw up the seam to Wes Welker. And Welker rarely runs a go route up the seam, so it was like yeah. he was in a bad position too. But Tom threw over his back shoulder instead of over his the lead shoulder where he was looking, and Welker had to sort of pirouette in the air and try to catch it. And was yeah. it catchable? Yes, it was catchable. Yes. Would Shannon Sharp I mean, have made that catch? Yeah, I think he would have made that catch. But that Brady kind of Brady kind of threw it on his back shoulder because he saw the safety coming out of the middle of the field. I got so it. he was trying to he was trying to protect him. But Skip, you 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 talk about Tom Brady's uh, uh hail mary throw to Gronk. I thought the one that he threw to Randy Moss in that Super Bowl was a better throw than the one he threw to, to Gronk because he threw that ball almost sixty yards. Yeah, that was a, it was a good one. I know, but I just thought the Gronk to a guy who was six feet six inches tall that it was right there, catchable, and he let these miniature DBs all go up and out jump him because he's kind of a shell of himself now. All right, guys, but we got to move on because uh, Kyrie Irving had some very strong Ooh. comments uh -oh. this yep. morning about his future in Boston. You need to hear that back. No mercy. Time for our final topic of the day. It might not be a lock. Kyrie Irving will re-sign in Boston at the end of the season. Kyrie was asked this morning if he'll stay with the Celtics and said, quote, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what's best for me and my career. I don't owe anyone bleep. So, Shannon, what's your reaction? He, don't anyone, he doesn't owe anyone poop. That's what he said. Oh, yeah, that's a nice mm. one. Uh, Thanks, Shannon. We know Kyrie marches to his own beat because even though he was catching criticism and blowback for leaving LeBron, LeBron James, basically he told you that wasn't in the best interest for me and my career. I wanted to go it alone. And so, look, stop asking him. He And as it, uh, the article also says, he acknowledges. He sees what the Knicks are doing and how they're positioning, positioning themselves. Ask me July 1st. I believe there's an 85 to 90% chance that Kyrie Irving will not re-sign with the Boston Celtics. Hmm. Well, for sure, he's not exactly going out of his way to endear himself to Celtics fans. <laughs> And they are not going to like this. They, they are going to, you know how emotional and high-strung Celtic fans can be? And, and yes. They're not going to, I'm not going to say they'll boo Kyrie, but they're, they're not going to cheer Kyrie as much as they would have. So he's going to become persona non grata there. And it, it indicates to me that his ears are open to the Knicks. Because I think, I yes. told you earlier, heart of hearts, I think he'd like to go to New York and play in an area that he grew up in for the New York Knicks. I think that's his goal. And he has – his handle is playground stuff. It's and one. Yep. And so he would fit in very well he would. in New York. He would. I believe he's gone, Skip. No mercy. Thank you for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Keep an eye out for the weekend edition of the podcast tomorrow morning featuring this week's best segments. Have a great weekend, everyone. Fox Sports. 
one of one. one.